Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Gamers Podcast. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. I am joined today by Trollbeard. Howdy, y'all. Bob is still not here. He should be back next week. Uh, I actually I haven't asked him if he was going to be on next week. He hasn't responded yet. But it's also one in the morning in Scotland where he is. <laughs> so it's yeah. understandable. Hopefully he'll be I back. I like it how week. we went the entire podcast last time. Like, oh, hey, Bob got married and he's going to Scotland. Like we just failed to mention that it pretty much like that day or the day before he got married and we forgot about it. Did we did we not talk about it or we did talk about it? We didn't talk about it at all. Cause I remember us talking about it after the, <laughs> the podcast. Ended. Oh, like, that's hey, right. We forgot to mention Bob got married. He's See, a big boy now. We did talk about it, just not on the air. <laughs> it counts. It counts. It counts. We miss you, Bob. Yeah, and we've got, oh god, I'm kind of, oh, I shouldn't say this out loud, I'm almost glad Bob's not here this week, because we have so much shit to talk about anyways. Yeah. This is like our first fucking jam-packed podcast. We were going to talk about the Nindies, and I had to can that, but we will talk about the one for, this. when is the next one coming out? The The new showcase with unannounced games is Tuesday the 28th. Okay, and actually, I have a question for you. Speaking of Switch, have you yes, played sir? Hollow Knight? I have not. I've been thinking about it. It's on sale this week. Do you? And I, I yeah, that's it. I'm debating on getting it. Everyone keeps calling it like Dark Souls, and that scares well, me. Well, the thing is, it's very deep. Like, there's a lot to it. And it's very obtuse. Like, so much of that game you can miss playing through it from what I can see. And like the average, like regular run through is like 20, 30 hours. Like it's not a short game. Expect to spend a couple of hours getting lost, looking for the guy that sells the maps. So you have any clue of what the fuck you're doing. So basically I shouldn't get it. (laughs) Well, it's good. Do you like really hard games? It depends. Like I like XCOM. I like, Sometimes I do. We're going to talk about a game that's actually very hard later that I've joined a fuck out of. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I don't think this one's going to be for me. It does look beautiful, though. Yeah, it's like this is one of those games, much like something we'll talk about later that I played this week, Guacamelee 2, where it's like so much of it is your like, you know, input skill. So here's the thing. Here's my dilemma. I am debating between this, Neon Chrome, because it looks like I've played that. I enjoy that. It's like a ro- top-down roguelike. Yeah, and, I've played that one. Um, Your game, the, oh my god, I can never remember the first part. Something Island. Oh, Yoku's Island Express Yoku's is Island. on sale this week. It is. For that was just super chill and super fun. Because here's the thing. I have seven fifty in Amazon gift card, and I have almost $3 on nintendo credits so i'm really leaning towards yoku's island because i've played roguelikes i don't think i'm gonna enjoy hollow knight that much yoku's island just looks like it's like the way out there i don't know if i'm gonna like it but i'm at least gonna enjoy what i play yeah yoku and i also believe both have a demo what does yoku's has a demo and I think Hollow Knight might have one. I don't think Hollow Knight does. Well, I th- I, th- I think it did at one point on Steam. Never mind. I'm I'm dumb. But oh, Yoku's yeah. Island Express does have a demo. It's also on sale on Steam too. Yeah, I want to get that on my Switch though. Oh, you know what? Yoku's yeah. does have a demo. Downloading it right now. Yeah, it's it uh it gets you through like the basics of what that game will be, and it's a it's a short demo. But it'll let you know whether or not you're interested in playing it. I think that's the one I'm going to end up getting is that. Just because it's so obscure and like goofy and it just looks like fun. Yeah, it's just it's just really super laid back. It's one of those kind of games where, yeah, if you said, you know, you, you do a lot of gaming quietly yeah. at work. <laughs> it's one of those games where it's not like super high stakes. You can just pause it. And not have to think about it and just turn it back on, you know, like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm just trying to 
get these items here in this little pinball area and move on to the next spot. Pretty much. How long is it? Do you know? I mean, it took me maybe like 10 hours. Okay. That sounds good. It's got a fair amount of like side stuff. You can go hunt down. You ever go to but, uh, to beat.com? Yeah. I, I check that out every now and then if I'm like, Trying to figure out, like, on my days off, like, how much I can get through. Oh, yeah, main story, five and a half hours. Okay. Let's see, Hollow Knight. <laughs> 20 and a half hours. God damn. Yeah, because so much of that is, like, if you're not absolutely paying attention to the sound of the guy who, like, sells the maps, he's, like, humming. Oh, like, if you don't know okay. exactly where to find him in each one of the areas... You spend a lot of your time lost trying to remember where the fuck you were. Okay. So yeah, I think we'll we'll just go ahead and skip that one for now. <laughs> so moving on to what we've been playing this week. I don't think I'm going to talk about Yoku's Island next week, by the way, because you already talked about it for two weeks. <laughs> I might bring it up a little bit. Yeah, like it's it's still valid to hear your experiences. Like it's true. You know, one of the games you're going to talk about. You said you were gonna talk about Graveyard Keeper. Yeah. Like I checked that out this week and I drastically did not agree. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, there's always, you know, room for the for another opinion. Well for now we're gonna go ahead and talk about your stuff for this week. Uh you played Dundara? You played this yeah, game checked way it out. faster than I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, like 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 I told you before, like I'm usually Pretty good at most of the games I play. This game is so fucking bizarre. I did this for uh, my Project 168. Yeah. Like, I like the super weird. As soon as it opens up, it kind of reminded me of fucking Dune. Okay. It's talking about all this like weird space shit. It's like the salt. Yeah. I was like, you mean the spice? Are, are we <laughs> going to call upon Shai Halud here? The fuck? Trying to figure out whether there's a floating Afro lady and giant people that are into the arts. It's super bizarre. It's super good though. Like this game is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's it's chill. It was like I played it for like a solid thirty minutes. Like not much longer than like the clip I sent you here, but I'm gonna also get this like switch. Yeah, like the way I'm playing this here, like moving so fast is also, how I played Runer and Mister Shifty. Okay. Like, like I, I, I stay moving in most of these things, but I hit a point where I was like, I, I, I hope it, you know, opens out further. Yeah. Because this game is like super simple. It's like, oh, there's just the jump and then the charge shot. It's not a regular just shoot. Like you've got to charge it for a second. Right. And it plays so weird. I had some moments where I wasn't remembering that I could, you know, still keep moving some of these battles because I was trying to remember to charge my shot. And it was kind of throwing me off. But I had just played through two other games, essentially, that day before I started. So I think I was just, you know, my brain was hurting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I played... uh... I probably played about 20, 30 minutes of it as well. And yeah, I really enjoyed what I played. It's it's unlike anything else, really. Yeah. Really it's on the Games it. Pass. That's the reason why I checked it out. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, so I love this, from, like I said, from what I played. It's definitely worth checking out if you like... I don't even know who this is for. <laughs> Black yeah, Black like, like, if you like weird, you know non platformy platformers that are like Metroid style because there is still a lot of backtracking. It's a Metroid you find a map. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so if you like Metroidvanias and weird shit, this is one for you. Yeah. Cause that's what Yoku's is, is but you do your that's traversal true. through pinball and not this weird like shooting yourself up and down on the roofs. Yeah. Yeah, a random box full of bees. I was like, you fucks. <laughs> and I was like, hey, what the hell, man? That's a whole lot of people. It's a whole lot of bees. Yeah. The bees. 
Oh no, not the bees! God damn it! What Nick Cage? You know, if the original Wicker Man is actually a really dark, fucking weird movie. I remember being terrified by that movie. And then the Nicolas Cage remake, it's like, oh, this is just silly. So you also played Tacoma, which I don't even know what the fuck this is. I have this on Twitch. Yeah, that's where I had it installed. Uh, Tacoma is another one of those Fulbright games. They're the people who made uh, Gone Home. Okay. Uh, it's kind of you know walking sim. You're a contractor coming into this space station, retrieving data after shit goes wrong. Everything on the space station is controlled and monitored by an AI named Odin. And that's where, you know, I, I mentioned to you before we started up Carl Lumley. He's the voice of the AI. Is that because but everything, he's all? Yeah, he, he's he's just awesome. And then, you know, he's also like the voice of like the primary person speaking in most of the game outside of these individual characters as you come across their AR recorded data. So the so the space station is recording everything in AR. Right. So that's why you see just these like representations of the people and not like security camera footage. Gotcha, that's cool. But it has all the full like dialogues of these conversations. So in these segmented areas of like you see in the corner back there at that door where it's white. Right. Like that's one of the outer edges of this recording. Okay. But you can like pause, rewind follow people and hear their story. Cause you know, so these people are in different rooms and during like this particular segment was like two minutes and 28 seconds. So you'll see some of the guys are in the kitchen. Some of the people come in from a different room and they're all having different interactions and conversations and you can pause it and go find where on the recording, they had their AR screen up and go snoop and spy on their shit. Okay. To get details. Uh, you can find like notes to find like this door over here is locked. Like I can find notes that have the info, or occasionally just follow somebody that goes to that door and see the code they type in. <laughs> That's cool. You know, kind of almost like prey. So this is where... very much like an investigation kind of game. Yeah, it has. Okay. You know, I like some of the lore. Because it's super sparse, super minimal. Like, you're just kind of discovering shit as it goes. I like the idea of the holiday they're about to celebrate called Obsolescence Day. So it's kind of like this this whole thing about, I guess in the lore, when AI became more prevalent and tons and tons of people started losing their jobs, being replaced by machines. Right. Like, once a law passed to allow, like, these things to take over a lot of these jobs. I think that's what they call obsolescence day. Wow. Okay. Yeah, like, like we're not, we're not needed anymore, but then there's, as you read some of these dialogue texts, you start to see like the real plot of what's actually going on. Cause you don't know when you come in here, if these people are alive, if they're dead, something really bad happened on the space station, but you're sent there by the company that runs the thing to find the information that's okay. still left on the thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's some spoilery stuff I could mention, but I just want to say like, it's like, as you read the fine details, it's a game where like, it only took me like two hours to get through. Okay. It's not very long. It's something you could sit down with your fiance and you could probably both enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. This might be something I watch. This does look yeah. interesting though. But it's it's part of part of like the real lore of like especially when you get to the end and you see like what the whole plan really was. Yeah. And you can reconnect. Like you just see that woman type in her code and I just copied it because I didn't yeah. find the note. But uh once you see what it really is and you go back and you connect the dots of some of the stuff right. you read. 
from some of these newsletters and these text messages and dialogues. So like this company, Venturis, is trying to open up basically these condos in space. And your crew is on this particular station kind of as like the testing crew and the initial setup. They're trying to get approval to start opening up these space condos and they need people to have long-term exposure to, to outer space and run logistics and all this other stuff on how an actual like place for people to live Yeah, in these floating, uh, you know, condos in these, you know, asteroid belts, essentially like the asteroid belt would be these, you know, condos and not necessarily asteroids. Just all these different floating space stations with room for people to vacation on. Right. And, uh, yeah, like it was one of those things where right as I was starting to lose interest in some of the stuff and I was just kind of speeding through, then I got far enough for it to escalate. Okay. And then I got to the end. I was like, yeah, that's a great payoff. I like that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check this out. I don't see any YouTubers I know that played through it, so I might, I might just play through it myself. Yeah. All right, pretty quick. Like, I did a pretty thorough, like, dig through in two hours. Okay. Like, on the how long to beat, as we were talking about earlier, it was, like, full playthrough was, like, three and a half. And that's going through and finding absolutely everything. Yeah. Well, that's definitely one to check out. Yeah. Did you ever play Gone Home? Yeah, but Gone Home, I think we've talked about this before, it kind of pissed me off because I thought it was a horror game, and I don't play horror games. Yeah. So I just kind of checked out, like, okay, what's the big twist? It was like, oh, the big twist is they're not home. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> yeah, like, that was the thing. Like, so much of that mood led people to think it was a horror game. I just it's don't just, do just horror really... games. I don't do jump scares. I, I hate that yeah. shit. It was just this really deeply personal story about a person, you know, that left their family to try to find themselves and came back. That might be a good one to play with my fiance because she could be like, oh, my God, it's good. She, cause she likes jump scares. But she's going to yeah. spend the whole time like under a pillow like, oh, my God, oh, my God, to get to the end and be like, oh, nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened. What the hell? You blue balled me here, Jacob. What the hell? <laughs> She'll be crying for the personal story and be like, but nothing happened. <laughs> Yeah, like it's really, it's really, you know, deep and emotional. And a lot of the stories here in Tacoma are really like interpersonal p- relationships between these people. Right. You know, relationships, you know, with the people that are back home on the planet and they're stuck up here for like their terms, like a year at a time. Right. Those other people had gone home. <laughs> yeah. Since. <laughs> But uh, also, yeah, like Steve Gaynor, he's the guy who runs Fulbright. He uh, he 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 knows how to really write personal stories. I don't think he's ever going to have big success, you know, making these big, long, open, expansive kind of narratives. He seems to do very well with getting straight to the point and getting out before he overstays his welcome. I, there's nothing wrong with that. Because that's also, like I mentioned, Carl Lumley, why I was so happy to hear him again, was like I immediately knew it was Carl Lumley as soon as he started talking. Because I also mentioned Steve Gaynor was like the lead designer on that DLC for Bioshock 2, Minerva's Den. And the whole story of that, you know, when you hear Carl Lumley's character talk is a deep story about his wife and the mistakes he's made and trying to stop the people from getting his, you know, scientific advancements. Right. So you, so you just hear these sad, deeply emotional monologues and, you know, conversations from him. And Carl Lummi's just a fucking boss. Like, he's just so goddamn good. I don't know why I know Steve Gaynor's name. Like, I don't really follow his stuff. Well, he's been on a lot of the kind of funny stuff. Okay. He's been on their he's, shows? He's been on like two or three of their podcasts. Okay, so that's why I know his name. Yeah, he gets mentioned a lot by 
Big that, old Greg Miller. Right. And that, half the time when I'm like, I don't know how I know you, that's usually how. It's one of their friends or something they talk about. Yeah, some podcast you listen to, it's like, it's like I remember like I was catching up on some like giant bomb casts. And I was like, why the fuck do I know the term wind jammers? And why the <laughs> fuck am I for wind jammers too, which got announced? Yeah. Why did I suddenly get showcase? excited for this game I've never played? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, fucking Jeff Gersman can't shut his you know chubby neck up about this goddamn yeah. game. Jared Petty, I've well. played it. I, I've played it. It's great. You know, I love the the Gary Wood. How many times can you say wind jammers? What is it? <laughs> so like on like one of the games dailies Wednesday. What a like, Wednesday! That right? was when, yeah, that was when it was Gary and Jared hosting. Oh, God. And uh, so that was the day that they had the news article about Windjammers 2 being announced. Okay. And then also later on, Gary had trouble saying Battlefield 5. So he just replaced every time he was going to say Battlefield 5 with the term Windjammers. (laughs) (laughs) I must have missed that one. Is that this week? Yeah, yeah, it was this week, Wednesday. Okay. So, like, he says Windjammers like 40 times. I'm going to have to go back and watch that. I love Gary Witta. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so ridiculous. Shout out to Gary Witta. Come on a real podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you also played uh, Guacamelee 2. Yeah, Guacamelee 2. It was one of those things where I, I had forgot because I had played the first Guacamelee. I loved it. It's great. Drinkbox Studios, they've made a lot of cool stuff. Uh, the first game I played from them was back on the Vita when I had one. They had Mutant Blob Attacks, which was like one of those games that actually did all the stuff you know the Vita could do. So it had the tilt, had the touch, had all the stupid, stupid things. But I forgot that so much of the jokes were like super memes and references. Okay. To the point where they have an entire little secret room area you go to. It's one of the side room, side quest kind of things you do as you're exploring. Because this is a Metroidvania. Right. It's a very uh, pretty Metroidvania too. Holy yeah, crap. like the art's great. You know, Mutant Blob's attacks looks cool. They made this game called Severed after they did the first Guacamelee, which is like a yeah, I have that on Switch. I couldn't get into it. Yeah, they they do a lot of weird, cool stuff. But um, I'd forgot that, A, they had done so much meme jokes and references to other games and other, you know, media. Because there's a ton of it in this game, too. But in this game, so many people, like, complained about, like, all oh, these memes are dead. What are they in this game? And blah, blah, blah. This is stupid. <laughs> I want to take this luchador mystic game seriously. Why are you, you know, making, you know, grumpy cat jokes or whatever. So there's an entire one of these secret rooms you go to that is called, you know, the dankest timeline. (laughs) Damn. So, so it is literally nothing but straight up insulting, essentially all the people that complained about the meme references from the first game. Yeah, who was? This does not look like a game you take seriously. <laughs> yeah, like, it, like the, they actually listed out some names and direct quotes, like from these like pedestrians in this this weird side room that are talking about, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like it's shots fired to the fullest. So is this pretty much a Metroidvania where you run around and punch stuff? So yeah, like the thing is like it's 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 a simple brawler, like the combat like feels pretty good for me. I like it, but I was always like a big brawler guy playing like you know, Streets of Rage, Fighting Force, sure. all these dumb things. But uh the the real like difficulty and the 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 fuck you parts cuz Drinkbox is, you know, a Canadian studio. So I have them and fucking Moldenhauer to thank for, you know, multiple hours of me just being really mad at myself for sucking. Right. Studio MDHR, the guys that did Cuphead. Okay. But yeah, so 
the the real difficulty in this game comes from the platforming. Because they have some absolute bullshit. Like, I need to kind of send you the other part of, like, the absolute fuckery so you can see the ridiculousness. Hold on, let me go back. How bad but yes, is it? It is, like, have, have, you, have you ever wanted to feel like you like yourself? I, I would like to. <laughs> well, uh, then... Just play the the main quest essentially for Guacamelee okay. and Guacamelee Two. I can do that. You don't have to do any of the side stuff. I probably won't. I played the first one. And I I don't I don't remember why I didn't like it, or maybe I just didn't play it enough. I don't remember. So yeah, this thing I just sent you is me cleaning up the last like insane challenge area, even with how bullshit like parts of this game got the first game still had some of the most insane platforming stuff in the the high level challenge room stuff like you're like in the first game there's like this giant tower you're trying to climb and there were entire segments of where like you transition between realms you know the land of the dead and the land of the living yeah with a button and you so some walls will be whole in one area, but not in the other. So like you're just like jumping through a wall, transitioning realms, transitioning back to catch yourself on the other side of the wall, and then jumping and doing that again. This crazy like tic tac toe thing, avoiding spikes and all this other crap. So much more of the absolute bullshit here. Well, in this, just a little thing. So this is. The there's a secret door you unlock that for th- this chicken realm. There's a chicken Illuminati in the game. Okay. Yeah, and you know the chicken powers were in the first game of where you turn into a chicken, but this one just like fully escalated into like it's got its own kind of skill tree. Now you've got like some of your special abilities. Like when you're a luchador, you have some special abilities while you're a chicken. So they really expand on those like abilities and just really, some of that stuff. You're really into the it's chicken absolutely. games, huh? Apparently, man. <laughs> I'm gonna change your name to Chicken Beard. I guess. <laughs> but yeah, like like it's like you see, these are in different realms. I've got to catch myself on that platform with that slide and not kill myself on the spikes. And oh, then my Lord. Yeah, so like I finished this, I 100 percent of the game, but I also finally learned how to like cheese the system of if I get killed, I go back to the start of the room, but if I just hit the spikes, I can go back to where I was just standing. Okay. So it was saving me a lot of time towards the end of figuring out the patterns because. If I die, I got to go back to the bottom piece again and redo all this whole room. Yep. That's infuriating to watch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like if you click even later, some of it gets worse. This is probably one of the rougher parts of this area. But yeah, some of the shit is like absolute bullshit. And I love every minute of it. I love like, I'm mean, obviously I love professional wrestling. And I love luchadors, so I kind of want to play this. See if there's like some uh, some wrestling lore in there. Hopefully, there is. I imagine there it's is. Uh, like I said, it's like the luchadors, are like these mythical like heroes. Yeah, just like in real life. Yeah, but they have actual magical powers in this realm. Just and like in real life, it. that's what I just said. <laughs> this is all very but, realistic. Uh, yeah. So, so you're telling me Rey Mysterio isn't a wizard? <laughs> no, he definitely is. He even killed a man. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever but, see uh, that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, shouldn't, shouldn't when he was actually back down in Mexico and the guy happened to... The guy that died in the ring with him. That was very sad. I shouldn't joke about that. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But, you know, he's not the, the first guy to die in the ring, sadly. No. Rooster uppercut. Yeah. So you do like, get more abilities and whatnot. You get abilities. That, well, the rooster uppercut was in the first game, 
But in this one, like it becomes like an essential tool for like platforming. So here's a question. Should I just play Guacamelee 2? Uh it's like you would probably like I honestly still think as far as like fun, Guacamelee 2 is probably more fun. But the overall experience, I want to say I kind of still like the first Guacamelee. Are they on Switch? Is this, uh, the first Guacamelee, I don't know. I th- think it may have just been ported over. Because I think they did the Super Hyper Edition. Which added some like tweaks and changes. I can look it up. I have my Switch with me. But uh, in this one, this Guacamelee, there's all these... like brawl rooms that pop up and they kind of really fuck up the flow because the combat's never like super hard the hard parts about a lot of the combat really becomes like a lot of these characters end up getting like over shields and they're all color coded based on the ability you need to break the shield okay so then some of those fights end up becoming like puzzles it's like, to, like melee is not on the switch by the way all right, it's Should on be. like every other platform. Yeah, I might have it on Xbox. I'm pretty sure I have it on PC. I think they gave it away on Xbox. Yeah, one time, the games with gold. Lucha, 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 lucha. But yeah, like I just really enjoyed it. Like the music's great. I love the uh, art so much. Yeah, the art's great. I love some of the animations and some of the characters. I love the designs of some of the enemies. Yeah, so these guys are red, and I've got to do my rooster uppercut to break their shields. Okay. But, you know, you can still, like, smash them and use them with your grapples. Yeah, I love how you just threw that guy into another guy. Yeah, so that's the thing. Like, even if they have the shields on, if you need crowd control, even if you don't have, like, your stamina charged up, you can smack the guy... And toss them just to, you know, get people off of you while your stamina comes back. Like, it becomes this this weird, like, ballet almost of some of the enemies. Like, I was talking about transitioning dimensions. Yeah. Occasionally, they're throwing the mix of some of these guys are in the dead realm. Some of these guys are in the living realm. Hmm. And they'll just be, like, grayed out. You just see their outline in gray. And you can't hurt them until you flip over to their dimension. Okay. So, yeah, it becomes, this, like I said, this weird, like, puzzle and getting it timed right. But towards the end, like, when you get a lot of these uh, these upgrades, like, I clowned out the final boss, like, so yeah. fast. I love games where you can do that. Well, because you also get drastically better playing the game the longer you go. Sure. And then you also are super powerful. The platforming never gets easier because it's one of those games where yeah i could show you how to do it but then you have to have the skill and timing and ability to actually do it (laughs) and the boss thing like i don't know i talked about this on one of our other shows the the moonlighter like i really i don't know if that last boss was easy or because i did everything and understood the game really well and was very powerful had everything upgraded that he became easy for me yeah because I didn't have a problem killing him. I had problem killing other bosses, but not the last one. Uh, Moonlighter coming to the Switch, by the way. Yeah, hell, I saw hell that. Hell yes. And then they also still have that roadmap of yep. other content they're going to be adding and updating. Yeah, I think I'll go back to that when New Game Plus comes out and try it out. I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah, that that. that one I'm looking into. I'll I'll probably get around to trying that. You really should. That's one of my favorite games like of all time. And I finished it, which is very rare for me. Yeah. Which you know, I finish games regularly. Kind of like a a mental problem I have of sticking sometimes too long in the games I shouldn't. You should definitely (laughs) try Moonlighter then, because you'll have a finite end. But one game that I find I'm going to spend a whole lot of fucking time on, I already have, is this Graveyard Keeper game. This is... This is to what Dark Souls is to, like, Dark Siders, or, like, one of those hack-and-slash games. This is Stardew Valley's version of Dark Souls. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Holy like, hey, shit. Let's, let's just make it needlessly obtuse it is. and make you have to figure all this shit out for no reason. I've spent a whole lot of time trying to figure things out. I cannot figure things out. And I just yeah. have to look it up. Yeah, it's so dumb. It's like, you know, whenever Jeremy was on, he's talking about Monster Hunter. Like, that's one of those games where you basically have to study. And I hate games like this, but I've put so much fucking time into this one. <laughs> but it's because it's th- this as my buddy likes to call it, it's your day job simulator. <laughs> and yeah. and I, I think, I think it has something to do with, I hate my day job. So this is like fun to me. I don't know. I don't know what the well, wrong with me. <laughs> it's, it's like the psychology behind people that are cutters. Okay. Let's go into that. Okay. So, Jesus. well, uh, well, a lot of like the, like the, the self harm, or a lot of these like medial tasks kind of like abilities, uh-huh. like you're 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 getting these manageable crises. So like like in the in the the psychology, a lot of the people who cut themselves is hey, I don't know how to fix myself, but I know how to deal with this wound, and it gives you a chance to focus on something else temporarily. So by completing all these small tasks in games like this, like you're getting that sense of reward of like hey, I did the thing. And it's a steady stream of it because it never stops. Like it, this shit just keeps coming. So you're just dealing with these small, easy to handle tasks repeatedly instead of one big thing that's overwhelming. I don't like that you're right. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it's literally the psychology behind why people A, cut themselves and B, play Euro Truck Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> the same type of people. God damn. Yeah, like, well, well, it's the same brain patterns, not necessarily the same, oh you know, mental health, you know, before <laughs> you start. But yeah, I, the game, like when I first started playing it, there were things I couldn't figure out and it was like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. And then like, I think more about it and I was like, yeah, but I like games like that. So I go back to it <laughs> and it's like, I play a little more and I'm like, this is, this is obnoxious. This isn't well designed. An hour later, I go back I'm like, yeah, but maybe, <laughs> but maybe but I can maybe. figure it out because I'm good at the games like this. Like, oh, okay, so I'm just what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do everything because I've spent. I was reading a guide online. It's like by day, blah blah, blah. You know, I fucking hate metas. By day, blah blah blah. You should be making this much money, and I am well beyond that point. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> I am literally I am the dumbest graveyard keeper ever. I'm just like I'm over here with my sawhorse making wood. <laughs> I don't know what to do past this. Oh look, I can cut stone now. That's Alrighty. More, that's most of my game. Then it's like, oh, there's a church there. Yeah, I've lived in this graveyard for like months now, and I haven't opened the church yet. <laughs> Hey, what's wrong with you, man? It's your main <laughs> job. Now I'm in the full swing of things. I have the underground area all opened up except the dungeon. Um, I'm doing alchemy. I'm doing the stone keeping. I'm fixing up the graveyard, doing the church thing. All the things. All the things. I put so many hours into this game, and I am not very far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's so many of those games where, like, I I play it for so many hours and then all of a sudden like late game I realize oh you mean I could hit this one button and it solves all these problems? That's me. I've been taking a piece of iron, putting it in the furnace, and going back to it and picking it up. Not knowing that if you just press right, you can put more iron in and just cook it all at once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's stuff like that. Like the batch actions you can do in a lot of games and save yourself yep. time. Like, how did I not know this button did this for the past 20 something hours I played this game? God damn it. When you're using the carpenter's workbench, you can make little wood planks and they don't take very long. You just hold Y and it quickly does it. I play it on Xbox. But, um. Yeah, that's where I tried it out on the, the Game Pass again. When right. Was... So you hold down Y and it drops the thing, you pick it up. Press A to open up the carpenter workbench menu again. Select the wood plank. Press Y. Do that process over again. That's what I was doing for the longest time. Or you can press right, go to like 20 planks and just hold down Y and he'll like clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> so yeah, that saved me some time once I figured that shit out. 
Um, now I'm to the point where I'm getting ready to start making wine. Um, I got to figure out how to get more seeds. Every time I make a thing of like a bunch of carrots, I end up with way less seeds than when I started. I think I might need fertilizer. But the game is not very intuitive. And I yeah, don't that's... know. But that's, that's why I say it's like Dark Souls. Because Dark Souls is not fucking intuitive at all. At least I don't think so. Yeah. And there are so but many that's... things in Dark Souls that just doesn't tell you. There's so many mysteries in that game. Yeah, but, you know, again, also, like, I, I have I mentioned before, like, Miyazaki's idea behind why he made Dark Souls is because he didn't understand the rules for Dungeons and Dragons and wanted to make his own version. No, I never heard that. He couldn't, he, he couldn't find, you know, English translations, essentially. Oh, shit. For a lot of these rule books, but he saw it and was interested in it. So uh, that's where he came up with all this dark fantasy stuff. He was trying to, he was trying okay. to replicate something that he didn't understand, and you know that mystery is you know a big part of why he was so interested in wanting to do it in the first place. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, but also it's like you know what? Fuck this! I got other things that make sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm well past that with this game. I'm I'm in. I'm deep. I don't know if yeah. I'll finish it, but there's a very strong chance I will. <laughs> Just keep plugging away on it every time you're home. Pretty much. I, I played it all day long today. It was... It's going to drive my fiance crazy eventually. So why are you playing this again? And I actually I told you... her this morning when she woke up, I was like, you're not going to fucking believe this. I could have been loading all this fucking iron in at the same time. <laughs> and she's like, you're so stupid. I knew that. I'm like, how did you know that? She's like, because Minecraft has always been that way. <laughs> like, they're not playing fucking Minecraft. God damn it. They're not all Minecraft. Yeah. I know talking about like these dumb things you'd ever realize is like, it wasn't until like when I was playing God of War, the you know the newer one for PS4, that I found in the menus they had these challenges, and by right. completing these challenges you got like XP bonuses or right. some other loot, and it was only by stumbling upon those because I forgot about them immediately after I read the dialogue box and said, "Hey, go to the challenge menu to look at this stuff." <laughs> I stumbled across it trying to find something on the map. And that's when I learned I could just like the axe that you throw, you can throw it at their feet and trip up the like the light enemies. Huh. I was like, this is so handy for crowd control. Yeah. Why have I not been doing this the entire time? Damn. And then also that same menu informed me that if there's like a weak enemy near a wall, if I do a heavy throw, it pins them to the fucking wall and kills them immediately. Did you just I was see like, all you that? bastards? Did you just see all that bread? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Holy yeah. shit, that was a lot of bread. Oh, wow. That, that, is, that is a lot of bread. Where is it at again? It's, it's like you're trying to break, you know, you know, oblivion. Oh, my <laughs> God, all the fucking bread. I can't even make one thing of bread. You're just, you're just dumping, like, 68,000 metric tons of cheese wheels trying to get the game to crash. This, see, this is interesting to me because this guy has... Let me see who it is. It's Avok. Thank you for the gameplay video. He has 50 red points. I have like 700. He has like 700 green points. I have like 40. We're reversed. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that's a lot of bread. Well, he knows the crafting systems at least. God damn, he's got that unlocked. But that, that is actually one thing I like about this game, is that you could just take a massively different path than someone else. And I think that, I mean, that's similar to Dark Souls as well. Yeah. I think this is the Dark Souls of Stardew Valley. <laughs> I finally found a Souls game I like. <laughs> but, so are you, you're no, you don't like this? You're not going to continue playing it? No, I, I played it. I gave it a solid 30 minutes <laughs> of actively trying not to be mad at it. Okay. And then I failed. Go back but to again, it. You I'm, might like it. <laughs> I, 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 like, I, 
I played like the old Natsume like Harvest Moon games on like yeah. the PS2, PS1, or whatever. And I guess way back then, that was also when I still had the ability to enjoy like JRPGs. I don't know what happened to my brain since then. That <laughs> yeah, we've talked about that meni- before. You don't like those kind the of games small anymore. menial tasks just died in my heart. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like all I play anymore is stuff like that. I don't know. And then I'm actively throwing myself dick first in the piles of the hardest games possible. And I'm doing the opposite. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, hey, give me Cuphead. Give me, you know, Not a Hero, which is, I think, about to come out on the Switch. I played that a while back. I'll take one Stardew Valley, please. (laughs) And then, you know, I 100% at Guacamelee. Yeah. You know, you saw that bullshit of that chicken platforming. It's like, like I just, I guess I just want to actively make myself mad. I tell you and what, then I enjoy being mad. Here soon, I'm gonna have a video come out of me playing Electronic Super Joy, and you'll understand why I don't play those games. Have you seen that game? Yeah, I I thought about picking it up because I keep seeing it for like less than four dollars. It's on Game Pass. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I meant to install it and give it a shot. If you like super hard platformers, you should check that out. I'm playing it just because it might make a funny video of me getting super angry. Yeah, because I I did most of Super Meat Boy back in the day. I finished a couple runs on uh, Into the Gungeon. I finished a couple runs on Downwell. Downwell is awesome. I looked at Minute, by the way. I don't think I can... I know Downwell is similar, but I don't think I can play a game... That looks like that for very long. Yeah, well, Minute is like super goofy. A lot of the characters are yeah. super fun and silly. If I get and, it, it's gonna have to be cheap. Yeah, it's I mean on, it's only like normally like fifteen, twenty dollars. I, I think it's ten dollars. Yeah. yeah so, I knew it wasn't that expensive. So that for me is one I'll wait for it to go on sale for like five bucks. But yeah, it's it's one of those games where much like you know the menial task, like you've got to start planning out. Yeah. And figuring out like how far can I get to the next like checkpoint, my new house or whatever, or to get to this one guy and get through his long conversation or find the shoes, let me run faster. Like you're planning out each one of these little individual short runs. Cause your 60 seconds doesn't start until you leave your house. Right. Yeah. I wish see games like that. I wish they had a demo. Like just weird games like that, like Yoku's Island. Yeah. That's smart. They have a demo. One game that should also have a demo, but I bought it anyways, is Mario Rabbit Kingdom Battle. Man, if we talked about it last week. I think you you cut you pretty much recommended it to me because I love XCOM. Yeah, it's like baby's first XCOM is what you said, and boy are you right, and boy do I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> I right now is it's a good time for me. I absolutely love Graveyard Keeper and I absolutely love Mario and Rabbids. And yeah, because isn't it thirty dollars right now on the Switch? Yes, it is. It's also forty dollars for the fucking bundle, and I didn't see that. Nintendo, you fucked up because Mario and Rabbids is at the top of the store for thirty dollars. If you go into viewing all offers and go to the absolute very bottom, that's where the bundle is for forty dollars. I would have bought that bundle. Yeah, because that one has the Donkey Kong DLC that just came out. Yeah, it has everything. And I think there's another one coming out still. Yeah. So now, like, I'm going to be very timid to buy the the, the DLC packs. Because I could have gotten them much cheaper. It just really fucking irritated me. Yeah. But, uh... Oh, he's not going to do it. He's trying to do it. I love that one of Mario's abilities is that he can do the team jump. Um, I love movement in this game. It's so fucking good. But Mario, yeah. in the game, you can you have a thing where you can choose, as you're moving, you can choose a friendly teammate, and they can throw you up in the air and make you go further. Well, Mario can land on them with a jump, a stomp jump. <laughs> like, well, fuck, that makes sense. And I just, I love that. I love the dashing system where you can just run into somebody and do damage to them. Um, I love the Peach is like a support character. She has like an AOE heal. Luigi, actual Luigi, not rabid Luigi, is a sniper. Is a sniper, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's using his vacuum. (laughs) 
There's just so many little... This is such a love letter to Nintendo games from Ubisoft. And I just love it. And, like, I know a lot of people were really pissed off about the whole rabbit thing. I love the rabbits, and they're perfect in this universe. Yeah, like, they, they, they did a good job of making it make sense. Yeah. But it really, one of the like, things that I told it's you... It's fucking Mario. Does it really have to make a lot of sense? Yeah. <laughs> well, Mario's always been dumb. Yeah. It's like you go to fucking, you know, New Donk City and Odyssey. It's like, oh, he's standing around real people. What the hell? Yeah. And like, this what, looks wrong. What is this? <laughs> what is this world made out of toy blocks? This isn't a Mario thing. But it looks Mario enough that you love it. <laughs> And, and the, so basically the story is that this kid somehow made like this thing that would combine items and I think it got combined into like a Nintendo poster and it's very bizarre. They like it, they really stretched to make the story work. Yeah. But that thing that combines items is now stuck to the face of one of the rabbits and uh, I'm not going to say who has them because it's a little bit of a spoiler. But he is able to combine things in the world. Like he does combine I don't know if it's Donkey Kong, but there is a, a Kong rabbit in the game. And it even has I think I think it has DK's tie on. I don't know if it said DK. Yeah. He uh he's you know kind of mixed in with like the image of you know the character from the poster. Cause there's also one of the rabbits that jumps that's like like mixed in with, like, an apple. Okay. Where, like, you see them super early on, like, the... Yeah, the spring The guys. hopper guys. Hoppers, yes. Because they have, like, this weird super Japanese thing of the apples peeled, and they pull back the skin to where it looks like little bunny ears. Oh, okay. Like that, yeah, like, if you look at their heads... Yeah, they're weird. They have, like, these weird... Their, their, their heads are, like, these red flaps... And they're meant to look like if you've ever seen like, like the octopus hot dogs. Okay, yeah. Like, so they also do this thing of like taking like a quarter of an apple and like cutting out the thing and then peeling like the skin back and those two little flaps to look like bunny ears. Huh. It's a weird Japanese thing. Yeah, there's probably a bunch of stuff like that in the game. But there's also like a bunch of. The, Go ahead. The Goomba stuck in the honey. And like the early right. level. <laughs> There's all kinds of little funny things in the background. There's one thing that made me laugh so hard. It was because you, as you're walking around, there is like an overworld where you're walking around, and the puzzles in the overworld are fucking awesome. I love them. Um. Oh, there. Here's the little hopper now. Yeah, it's those guys. Yeah. Okay, I, I didn't know what the hell was on his head. There's it was something weird. But um. What was I just saying? The overworld. Oh, the little random things in the background. There's one that I found so funny because they're almost all, they're just mostly little scenes of the rabbits in the universe. And one of them was, the text was, I wonder how long they've been at it. And one rabbit is up on a little cliff and there's one rabbit underneath the cliff and the rabbit up top is laughing at the one at the bottom. And the one at the bottom gets all mad and he runs up the cliff and shoves him off. And then he starts laughing at the one at the bottom. And it just... <laughs> It's just this yeah. constant cycle. And it's like, I wonder how long these two have been at it. These two little dumbass rabbits. Because <laughs> they are yeah, dumbasses, they're... and the game acknowledges that, and it's it's hilarious. Yeah, the I'm... weird competition between idiots is like, yeah. like being, you know, trailer park big dick contest. Like, <laughs> I don't think this game would have been half as interesting with just Mario enemies. But just Goombas and like Koopa Troopers and stuff. It wouldn't have had the same charm. Right. But then again, you know, the original like Super Mario RPG had a lot okay. of weird shit and was really yeah. cool. You know, so like they could have made it work, but the project wouldn't have existed unless, you know, the Ubisoft guys had pushed for it and actually gotten okay. How like crazy is the fact that they got they, Ubisoft is European, right? They're uh, mainly. They're Canadian. Canadian, okay. But just, they also, you know, have a lot of stuff in actual France. But just, I mean, anything other than a Japanese developer getting permission to use a Nintendo stuff like that doesn't happen often. 
Like, it happens occasionally in little things. Like, there's that NBA game that has the Mario crew in it. But what else is Mario in that's not Nintendo? Not well, much. I mean, they have, you know, other companies occasionally that are, you know, Japanese to make some of their games. Sure. That's what I'm like saying. All like, the... Outside of Japan, this is crazy. Yeah, this this doesn't normally happen, no. But to be fair, Ubisoft has had a long partnership of being like one of the only third parties that ever really stuck around and was still putting shit on the Wii and the Wii U. Okay. Because, you know, like, they're still putting out original Wii copies of Just Dance. Oh, shit, that's right. Just Dance is huge on the Wii. Yeah, like, it still sells, like, a couple million copies every time. My mom <laughs> loves Just Dance. <laughs> So yeah, they still sell Just Dance. The new Just Dance you know. is going to be on the Wii U, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be crazy. on the Wii and Wii U. <laughs> Why are you be so often? Because we're going to make a bunch of money. <laughs> well, hey, people are still buying it. Yeah, who gives a fuck? Don't buy it. You know, like yeah. if you go into a Walmart, the only Wii game you'll probably ever see is like two or three different years worth of the Just Dance games. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go look now. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, so here I think they're gonna do the. Oh yeah, they're gonna do the Mario Stomp thing. Yeah, the combo. Yeah, because there's upgrades you get for his stomp. Right. So you can upgrade your you can, or get new. Oh, oh no, we didn't do the stomp. Damn it. You can get new weapons. You there's a skill tree. So like one thing I found interesting is Luigi the sniper. He, if he's up high, he does extra damage, and you could actually increase that extra damage, which is an XCOM thing. Like, there's a lot yeah. of things they just directly rip from XCOM, and I love that. And I hope there's other, and I'm sure, I actually, I know I'm going to unlock a bunch of other characters. I hope there's more rabid characters, because, like, I love Peach. Whenever you have her up against the wall, she just kind of leans with her elbow, like, her, and I'm done with this. Like, <laughs> she has such a fucking yeah, attitude. Yeah, there's. There's always a you know a rabid version essentially yeah. of the other characters, and the the Luigi rabbit his shirt's too big on him, so whenever he does a shield, his hands kind of like or his shirt kind of like gets bigger than his hands. It's it's just funny. They even say at one point that Rabbit Peach is really into her cosplay because she yeah. even expects Peach like she's making sure she's doing the whole thing right. Yeah, and she's always taking like selfies and doing yeah. weird shit. Yes, yeah, when you fight one of the bosses, she takes a bunch of selfies of the boss dying, which I thought was really fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's not okay. The game, I love it, man. I did not, this is one of those games where I was like, I'll enjoy this. I did not think I was going to enjoy it this much. I'm going to have to play this instead of Graveyard Keeper tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, the like the the main thing that really made me lose interest in this game is probably these enemies they're fighting right now. Really? This like, isn't they, very far. Like, I didn't get very far before. But uh, I was like, those stupid big, you know, brick smasher dudes. It's like, yeah. oh, every time you proc, they can just keep hitting every time. So did you And they play, hit so, so goddamn hard. Did you play XCOM? Yeah, I played XCOM. Played it? Didn't, like, get into it, or...? No, I, I played through most of. Okay, because like, there's a, a lot of enemies of similar to that that will just fuck you up. You just well, have to, it was you just have to like, kite those guys. Yeah, like I was just like getting, you know, disinterested and like, oh, every time I get close to these guys, yeah, like they like their their ability will trigger every round. It doesn't matter how they don't have like any kind of fatigue meter. Right. It's like, oh no! If you shoot them and they're within range, they're gonna walk over and smash you for literally like a third of your health. And this is one of the overworld puzzles. Like I just I, puzzles in the game are absolutely great. There's little challenges you'll come across, and like typically, I don't give a fuck about stuff like that. I really want to 100 percent this game. I really wish to switch at achievements. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay, because I'll complete it and I'll know that I did it. <laughs> Yeah, you know that's that's the thing. Like, I was like a big like trophy achievement guy, to the point to where like every time I look at like my like achievement points on the Xbox, like I stopped playing the Xbox for 
like from like right after whichever one came out last gears of war three or mass effect three i don't remember but like literally i finished whichever one of those games it was yeah and then i sold the xbox like immediately thereafter damn so i had like eighty thousand gamer score <laughs> and stopped playing the xbox for a lot of years and then i see guys i know that have still been playing Xbox, you know, the entire time. And they're still sitting down there like 30. So I was like, I played way too many fucking games. <laughs> I don't know what I have. I can find out though. So but yeah, I just hit a point. I of like where I burned out. Right. I like achievements, but I don't need them. If I have the option, yes, I would prefer to have them. Because it's just kind of nice to track things more or less to me. But I know a lot of people like hate achievements, which I find really weird. But that's also one of those things that people just hate things just because. Yeah. But I'm a fucking psychopath, and when I fall into something, yeah. I take that shit way too seriously. I'm really bummed so out then... that I have Game Pass, and I'm not going to be able to get it for two bucks. <laughs> I don't like stuff like that. Like I kind of get punished for already having it. So yeah, only for people not currently subscribed. Yeah, I mean, is that kind of shitty? I still, you know, I still never used my two week trial. Really? So yeah. er, er, yeah. like when I went to Hand go buy the, I, well, it's in the store. I don't have the option to just give you a code. No, it's fine. Hand it over. <laughs> like, I would if I could. Why can I not look at my gamer score and shit? I used to be able to on the website. Yeah. But yeah, that was the thing. Is like It also really hurt. Like It didn't hurt as much when like my old PSN name got banned. Because like, all the like the 40-something platinum trophies I had Good that Lord. are now gone. Yeah. Ugh, I gotta reach my TV. Okay. Because yeah, that was a fucking psychopathic thing about it was... Like I was playing, I was replaying some games on both platforms just to get the trophies. And oh yeah, no way! I wouldn't. Like do yeah, like like I, I said, do dude. That even for Stardew Valley, like this, I definitely there was a do. hard twist in my brain that just changed one day, and I just realized like, no, this doesn't interest me anymore. And it, like it, it was so weird becoming like a completely different gamer. Like just over the course of like a month, essentially. I have sixty thousand eight hundred thirty-five gamer score. Yeah, I'm uh, like eighty thousand, and I haven't, and I haven't been actively playing anything on the Xbox since like twenty fourteen yeah, or twenty twelve. I got the eight year badge. I think I think mine is like eleven. Oh my god! I have okay. This is. Graveyard Keeper, I'm going into the stats. Let's see how long I've been playing this. I have 95 out of 1,000 achievements. 95 points out of 1,000 points, rather. Uh, doesn't say. I have 157 days spent in-game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm way behind what I should be. I do have a rare achievement, though. Made 30 slices. You've got the perfect size slice pretty much down. That's a rare achievement. So that's kind of cool. Huh. So yeah, I just I just actually looked it up. So I have not like I was not an active Xbox user since March of 2012. It was Mass Effect 3 that came out last. Okay. So so I literally I rolled credits on Mass Effect 3 and like the next day sold my copy of <laughs> Mass Effect 3 and my Xbox 360. Damn. So yeah, I I had the the vast majority of that eighty thousand gamer score from six years ago. Damn. <laughs> oh, so this is actually the puzzle I wanted to bring up. Oh, let me switch back. Going back to Mario Rabbids, I thought this puzzle was really cool, where you have to do get the uh, chop chop to fight these guys. Basically, did you get to this point? No, like I, I got like this area you're looking at, like I stopped pretty much right at the introduction of these guys. Okay. The big block guys. 
So this like it was. This is pretty neat because Chain Chomp is stuck down there. So you basically just need to kite them around Chain Chomp so he fights them. Yeah. I love, there's a bunch of little puzzles like this in the game where you have to use the mechanics of the game in a very specific way. Um, and I find that XCOM had that in places where XCOM was mostly just like you know, extract a guy, kill a guy, that kind of thing, where this has actual puzzles. So this is Baby's first XCOM, but it's also, it's got, like, its intricacies to it. Yeah, it's got its own stuff. But if you like XCOM at all, or you like tactics games, this is absolutely worth playing. Like I said, I'm surprised how much I'm I'm loving it. And I haven't even got that far. Apparently it's about 20 hours uh, to complete it. So I think I'll be completing it. And now we've got a bunch of a bunch of Gamescom trailers to go over. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't know what order these are in, by the way. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> uh, my, we'll, we'll just we'll just call them like we see them. My tabs at the very top of the screen are tiny. So, first one, Darksiders 3. Now I didn't get much into Darksiders. I played the first one, thought it was okay. I don't really get into games like this that much, especially when they require a shitload of time. But I do like them. I do like the whole hack and slash gameplay. And I like well, that was the thing. I like the world and the lore of Darksiders. Yeah, Darksiders one was you know not very long. It was Darksiders two that added all the weird Diablo shit and like dungeon runs. Okay, and, you know random loot drop. Like I said, the first. Darksiders was essentially like a mature rated Zelda. Yeah. Where you had specific weapons you found and specific power ups, and you went from point A to point B, much like, uh, you know, the original Arkham Asylum. Okay, right. I do love those games. It was a very straightforward, concise experience. And then the second game opened it up you know, a lot more. So then in, you know, Arkham city, it made it this big open world city game, but in dark Siders two, like I said, there was different categories of weapons. Now you could find, and they had, you know, rarities and levels and See, like they like random that. drops. Yeah. Like it was interesting, but like it kind of really slowed down big chunks of that game. and just kind of expanded the length for no real reason. A lot of areas. Yeah. But most most of that stuff was just side stuff. You could you could get around a lot of it. I think Darksiders 1 probably came out right before. Because games now, they want you to just play them forever. And Darksiders 2 was probably at the beginning of that. Darksiders 1, I think, probably missed that, that whole trend. I'm sure this one's going to be just like that with making you play it forever. Well, it, like I have a feeling they're gonna have more like short form DLC with like challenge rooms and other stuff. Yeah, these games Cause, usually do. Because most of what I've seen so far of Dark Souls Three, which I'm actually like really interested in, but it's 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 a low priority game. Like I mentioned for me, like yeah. there's so many other things I'd rather have way more. Like I want to see where this game goes. I want to you know figure out the story because. The second game, you know, literally ends on a cliffhanger of, you know, all of the siblings coming down to Earth. Okay. So, like, you know, war, pestilence, famine, and wrath. fury is oh, fury. this lady. Yep. Yeah. I, bl- I, I know war and uh, death are brothers because in the whole part of dark side is too you're trying to clear the name of you know war so right. like war got blamed for all this shit from the first game and right? now yeah in the first game of like he started the apocalypse too early and then now all the the worlds are mad at him and he's trying to clear his name and then shit happens to that game and then he just falls further into shit and then so much of the second game is death, his brother trying to clear his name. 
So at the end of that, you see all of them reconvening into one area. So you just kind of like see like their color coded lights streaking through the sky coming down. Okay. You you never got to see the other two. So like the fourth guy, we still don't know what he looks like. And when they first revealed Dark Side of Three is the first time we saw Fury. I'm sure they did all that on purpose. Yeah. Well, also I, I they were you know, starting to see that THQ was on hard times as they were wrapping up Darksiders 2. So I don't think they wanted to, like, overcommit too much in case shit went bad. Right. Uh, So far, what I've seen from this, it looks like it's more, like, focused combat and not the weird, like, random loot stuff that... Like, some of the weaponry they added was cool, but, like, the leveling and the stats kind of you know, really was off-putting with the kind of style of combat and the areas you went to. But I but I'm I'm really interested to see where this game goes. You know, THQ Nordic, this is gonna be one of the first like yeah new games that they've, you know, funded and put out. I think this game's gonna have it kind of rough coming out after God of War. Yeah. It was like those games, they're going to have to really up themselves. Well, I mean, to be fair, uh, nobody that owns a PS4 is going to have to compare it to God of War. Like, it might it might catch it rough from people that can't shake how fucking great that game was when they yeah. review it. But anybody on the Xbox or anybody on the oh, PC, yeah. you know... But still, you know, everyone is well aware of God of War and how good it is. And I think I just feel like this game's going to get comparisons like, well, it's no God of War. Well, yeah, but also like, but but again, you know, people still compare like, you know, all sorts of dumb shit to other dumb shit, you know, like, you know, like the Call of Duty Battlefield thing. Those are drastically different games. Yeah, absolutely. And then people were still like, ah, oh, no, it's not the thing I'm after. Like, well, that's fine, but those are very different experiences. <laughs> and they're not directly comparable other than the fact that they have people shooting guns. Yeah. One game, I mean, you could directly compare with Darksiders is Devil May Cry, which you're pretty excited yeah. for, right? Yeah, Devil May Cry 3 is probably one of my favorite games ever. I like it's a, way up. I played a lot of the new one, the reboot, and yeah, I the really DMC. It. Yeah, that was a platinum game. That one, I re- I really liked that. I played through that. That was cool. So this a is lot made of people by different just, people. So this is made by Capcom proper. Okay. So you know, like the the general story behind the first Devil May Cry was Not that really. it was a. Well, it was originally meant to be Resident Evil 4. What? But then, you know, they didn't like... Like, the the plans changed, and they were going to wait and make Resident Evil 4 what it was. They wanted to make it very different. Yeah. This would have been very different. So, so the, the initial kind of, like, design documents, as, as they were starting production, plans changed, and... You know, the main guy who made this game is the main guy who, you know, created Resident Evil. This is his new project he wanted to start on. Yeah. So they gave they gave him, you know they gave they gave him the heads up to let him make a new series. And he came up with Devil May Cry. So the first game is really good. Second game, everyone will tell you it's pretty trash. Huh. Like it like it it, it it failed miserably. They tried to do weird yeah. shit and none of it really worked. And so many parts of the game were busted, so it was like way easier. Because Devil May Cry games are very hard, typically. Yeah. Devil May Cry three being like the, like the shiny example of wow, this is just really fucked. <laughs> I don't think they like DMC to me isn't terribly hard. Yeah, and DMC. I, also, I have it on by, easy though. Yeah, well, DMC was made by a different company. Yeah. It was made by Platinum Games. But even you know, Devil May Cry who... 3, I don't think of that as a very difficult game. But again, I, I played it on easy. Well, my point is, like, you could play it. It's not like Dark Souls where that's hard no matter what. 
This game, I feel well, like it is. To be fair, mm-hmm. Dark Souls is considerably easier than Devil May Cry 3. Bullshit. <laughs> I don't think so. As someone who played Demon Souls, which is broken and shit, and who played a lot of the first Dark Souls, like I platinum Demon Souls back in the day. Yeah. And I was somebody who did multiple runs through Devil May Cry 3. Devil May Cry 3 was like the Ninja Gaiden reboot on the original Xbox. Like, it was just... It's pure reaction time and skill. It's not something that on the high difficulties, you can just kind of like turtle up right. and plan out. You know, okay, fair I, enough. I know the pattern. Shield, roll out, roll out, shield, roll out, attack. You know, like, nobody's going to be a fucking single level of Devil May Cry 3 with Donkey Kong bongos. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, like, because it, it's it's skill and reaction based. It's not just, you know, pattern recognition and, you know, low level timing. Okay. Because depending on the, the Souls game, some of those windows for your rolls and your iframes are, are fairly forgiving depending on the enemy. Fair enough. I concede. <laughs> yeah. Like like as someone who was literally like fucking sweating like pure like I think there's a part of Devil May Cry 3 where I actually was biting into my lip and bleeding. Yeah. Damn. Cuz I was like that focused. I didn't realize I was biting that hard. I guess part of the <laughs> Yeah. Part of the gameplay they showed for Gamescom cuz this is the gameplay reveal at Gamescom. They showed the trailer, which was cool, uh, at E3 when they announced it. But part of the trailer here, or the gameplay they showed, uh, there's this enemy that's shooting these missiles. And Nero is the character you see here. He's the guy that's missing the arm. Right. Because he has these things called, like, Devil Breakers, I want to say, that are basically, like, prosthetic arms that have abilities. Like you see in the bottom right, he can equip yeah. those and use them, but they are on like a limited use. They break if you use them too much. You know, there's a whole like risk reward thing to using the arm. But he has like this move where he dodges like one of these missiles, jumps on top of it. And now he's fucking skating through midair, steering the missile back to fly to fight the enemy. So that was like one of the best things that they really introduced with some of the the combat styles from Devil May Cry 3 was there were times where, you know, like some of these small enemies, you'd knock them on the ground and you jump on top of them and you'd just be like spinning 360s, dual wheel pistols, spraying everywhere, just skating on a guy as you're killing his friends. Yeah. And then you had ways to combo out. Like it's, it's just pure. Like if you, if you understand the systems, it's a beautiful thing. Like at the end of the day, what, there's an enemy called the Nidhog? That's, I didn't know that was an actual well, thing. Well, the Nidhog is an actual, like, Norse, like, monster thing. Never knew that. Makes sense now. Yeah, <laughs> that's, you know, why the game Nidhog is named yeah. Nidhog. The giant eater worms. They're, they're, they're devourers. But, uh, yeah, in, in the, the gameplay trailer, not the actual, like, Gameplay footage for Devil May Cry 5. Yeah. So many people lost their shit because they were really only showing Nero, and Nero was introduced in Devil May Cry 4. Okay. Which I didn't like that much. But my my big problem with Devil May Cry 4 was it was like an Xbox 360 game, and they had like a hard time limit, and they were trying to make it look really pretty. So like 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 the scheduling and the planning. So pretty much like you hit a point in Devil May Cry 4 and the rest of the game is you're going like in exact reverse. Like like the game just becomes like a mirror run on like a Mario Kart track. So okay. like half the game is going all the way back. And so it, it like lacks a lot of the variety of like locations. And that was really disappointing to me, but I like the way Nero played. So, like, Nero has some cool stuff with his hand, but when they showed Dante in the gameplay trailer, like, at the end... Yeah. Uh, so, like, you see him, he's 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 much older. 
and he's riding on this motorcycle and he like <clears throat> comes out of nowhere, flips in on this motorcycle, lands between these guys and you just see him smile and then he pulls the fucking bike apart into these two goddamn weapons. <laughs> So, like, this bike is actually a dual blade thing with, like, the tires spinning. You're just beating motherfuckers to death with your motorcycle that splits in half. Like, Devil May Cry is so idiotic and ridiculous. I'm showing it right now. So, I guess, like I, I wonder if the game's going to work with sometimes you play Nero and sometimes you play Dante. Yeah, that's essentially, yeah. you know, you'll, you'll transition out. Because, like, you spent you know, a portion of Devil May Cry 4 playing as Dante, but the vast majority were Nero. So who is the guy from DMC? DMC is Dante. Okay. That's That's a young, yeah, that's a young Dante. That was a reboot. That's, you know, a a different reality that doesn't tie into these games. I'm okay with that because we can still get a DMC 2 from Platinum. Uh, that's never gonna happen. No, that game sold sold like shit. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, like like the it's the thing of like how I would always say, you know, you don't know why Mega Man died as a franchise and was never popular anymore because the fans of Mega Man killed it. Oh. They only wanted to support the exact things. You know, they only wanted sprite based, like old school. That exact same thing. They just basically wanted you to put a new skin, throw some new, you know, robot masters in there and call so them. So like day. nine and ten. Yeah, nine and ten. Or, you know, any of the Hunter or the like like the X series, the Zero series, those were just different art styles of the exact same gameplay. Yeah. And most of those didn't sell as well as the old school games. Huh. So whenever they tried to do weird shit like Mega Man Soccer. And Mega Man Legends, which I actually really liked. Legends is awesome. And uh, there's always the unfortunate thing that Mega Man Legends 3 was ready to go, pretty much. And then they canceled it. Right. Did you ever play Mighty Number no. 9? I played it. It is fucking boring. Okay. I do. I love Mega Man. I bought that game. So excited for it. Playing it, and I was like, I don't like this. This is weird. Looked it up. Yeah, this is. Oh, no weird. one else likes it either. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, I felt you, so you much better. <laughs> I felt so much better. I thought people liked it. I don't know why I thought that. No, like, I think, it, people wanted to like it. I think what was in my head was the hype building up to it. That's what I remember. Like, everyone was excited for it. And then vastly disappointed. Um, one thing I am fucking so excited for is this new The Dark Pictures. And I said, yeah, the, I the said in this very solid. podcast, I don't like horror stuff. I <laughs> fucking love Until Dawn. That is so good. And this is from the same people, and it's going to be it's gonna be an anthology type thing, right? So, yeah, they're going to be releasing, you know, multiple games over the course of, like, the next few years that are all kind of like just like the shorter game experiences all telling different styles of horror stories. That's so exciting. I love, so it's ba- I do like anthology horror movies cause they, they make really interesting stuff uh, or they end up with some really interesting l- looking things. Uh, Kevin Smith is making a horror anthology right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a film series. It's uh, Kilroy Was Here. Yep. Or something like that. Yeah, that's the one. They just but finished yeah. filming it in Sarasota. Yeah, and Chris Jericho was involved. Yep. So excited <laughs> about that. Um, But yeah, the Until Dawn is such a good story. It's so fucking entertaining. And I am so excited to see what they do with like an anthology thing. Because that's not a thing that happens with video games, really. Like, there's, like, around the top of my head, there's, like, the Basement Collection, which is a bunch of indie games. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's, like, WarioWare and stuff, but those aren't... I don't know if I'd call them an anthology, because those are purposely built just for WarioWare. Yeah, those are small mini games with a purpose. Yeah. Those aren't, like, a collection of stories that aren't necessarily all linked together. They're just there to, you know... 
be interesting. You know, why why overstay your welcome? Yeah. But I like this idea that they're... I hope from this we get a bunch of the dark pictures, because they could even do DLC to add more of them. This could be a platform that exists forever, quite frankly, which would be kind of cool. Um, and whichever one does the the best, spin it off into a full game, a full story. I love that idea, especially coming from that studio. Now, from what I understand, the new Until Dawn thing didn't do well. It wasn't very good. Well, Supermassive made three games since uh, Until Dawn. Right. So they did the VR Rush of Blood. Which is supposed to be pretty cool for a VR game. Yeah. They did uh, Hidden Agenda, which was kind of cool. But it's a, a Play Link game. Hidden Agenda. So it's a, oh. So it's a, it's a, like you're investigating like a serial killer. You're a cop. Bad neighborhood. I played it. It was cool. You can you vote on the decisions, right? Yeah, so basically you play the game with your phone. Yes. So you can have multiple people there in the living room. They all open up, you know, the phone app and you all make your decisions based that way. Yep. I just realized by the way, I fucked up. <laughs> I was supposed to talk about a couple other more games. Uh we played that's you and Jackbox Party Pack 2 and 3 last weekend. Yeah. Have you ever played that stuff? I've played like the original Party Pack at a friend's house. Yeah. Um I I've seen that you played. I've got like a code I could just give to somebody just still sitting in like my Google Keep. Yeah. Cuz like they they emailed me like the code for it from Sony. It was just something they like gave me. I don't know why. I was think it was an email they sent out to a lot of people. And then I was like, well, I don't want to play this game and I have nobody to come in here to play it with. Just because like my gaming room is set up at my desk with no room for other people to sit down. Right. Yeah, that's like move the entire fucking PlayStation somewhere else. <laughs> you sh- you should absolutely if you ever get the chance, you should redeem that and take it to a party and just play with a bunch of people. It's amazing. And it's just, it's like Jackbox, but honestly, probably better. It's got more personality to it. They're, they're awesome games, but that's pretty much really all I have to say about it. They're just absolutely fun party games. But yeah, I'm excited about the uh, Super Massive doing more stuff. I, I just yeah. messaged my friend that has a PlayStation and where we played, that's you, and she's super into Until Dawn. So I told her about Hidden Agenda, like you guys need to get on this. We need to play this. Yeah, Hidden Agenda, like all a lot of all those PlayLink games go on sale fairly regularly for like five bucks. I like that Sony's kind of pushing that system, that PlayLink, because that's I think that's going to happen more and more often. It happens with Jackbox, and they're pushing that. Um, there's a bunch of mobile games you can just play like in that way. They all communicate with each other. I love that system. Yeah. Because you can play it on you know, a phone or a tablet or a computer. You can play Jackbox that way. It's yeah, great. you don't have to have you know 20 different controllers that are 60 bucks a piece. Exactly. You Everybody know, just shows up with their phone that they normally already have. Even last weekend, Brian from the LARPs Brothers, he was doing LARP Brothers stuff on his phone. So it was kind of a, a hassle for him to switch between the browser and the messenger. And he kept switching. And he was like, fuck it. You want to go got the iPad and just play the game on the iPad. And it was perfect. <laughs> so, and yeah, everyone has a phone. So that's, that's yeah, a whole bunch much. of controllers. Mo- mo- most, like the vast majority of adults now. Can you imagine like a, having a to play phone. Jackbox? I know. I don't know about that to you, but Jackbox goes up to eight people. Can you imagine having to buy eight controllers and get eight people to bring their control? That's not going to well, fucking happen. I was going to say, I think the PS4 only handles up to seven anyway. Right. But it's just, it's not likely to happen, even if it did. You'd have to get a whole bunch of PlayStation people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a really handy feature for those basic, not like yeah. overcooked, where it's all like pure reaction time and like input skill. It's just like, hey, we're all making decisions. Yeah. 
Right. So our next game on here that I didn't even I didn't watch a whole lot of this anime, but I remember enjoying it is Fist of the North Star. Yeah, so it was it was a series. There was a movie. It's it was very uh, popular. Yeah, well, it was it was one of the OG, you know, animes that kind yeah. of blew up. Because between with, uh, like it, Kenshin and stuff. Well, well, back between like it and like Ninja Scroll, where like the oh, sort of super yeah. violent like martial arts anime that really popped. But yeah, Fist of the North Star is like really interesting. I'm I'm super curious to see like just how violent this game gets. What I'm seeing isn't like, great though. By the way, we haven't watched any of these trailers, or at least I haven't really watched any of them. This is actually not looking very good. <laughs> no, it looks like it's gonna be another one of those random, you know, go into an area, fight a bunch of goons, anime adaptation games. I mean, if it had the Arkham style fighting system, it'd be fine, but it doesn't even look like it has that. Oh, that's violent. He just exploded in a bunch of blood. Oh, he, we'll see. He stabbed his thumb into the side of that guy's head. Oh, is that what he was doing? Okay, I didn't catch that. Yeah, oh, yes, he did. How. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's this how is... he was holding that guy by the side of his head. Yeah. This is going to yeah, be. That, that... Yeah. That looks appropriately violent, because so much of like the abilities are like the the touch points of yeah. like where your chi and everything are, and right. you using you know those abilities. But yeah, they've already reused that flying in the air and yeah. popping thing. Yeah, if there's yeah. a whole lot of these execution type things, that would annoy me. So. I have to keep it on. This looks like a very bad version of God Hand. Yeah, we'll move on to something that looks (laughs) much better. Is this uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which is supposed to be like a samurai uh, Dark Souls, right? Why does Dark Souls keep coming up this fucking podcast? Well, because a lot of people are really big fans of that game, and it's been enough years since the first game came out. For people to have wanted to make, you know, yeah, their kind of takes on it. So, because another one of those Metroidvania like, games that just came out called Death Gambit is basically like two D knockoff Dark Souls, okay. much like Salt and Sanctuary. Salt and Sanctuary. So, in a few years, we're gonna get a battle royale game. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Probably. This this doesn't look like it's for me, but I do love like samurai stuff and This game essentially looks like if From Software decided to make a Tenchu game. Yeah. It's for somebody. It's not yeah, for me. I, I'm interested. I'll give it a shot when it comes out. There's a lot of people that are super interested, but it's funny to me seeing the impressions of some of the people who are real big Souls fans. Like how hard they were like having to shut off basically their muscle memory. Yeah. Cause so much of that game, like play it. It's not, it doesn't just play like a dark souls game. Like it plays considerably differently and there's verticality. There's a jump button. Which game are we talking grapple about? Hook thing. Sekiro. The game. Okay. You just showed. okay. So that game, it's not, it's not dark souls. It's, it's hard. And it's made by the guys who make dark souls, but it's not that same formula. Okay, like it's but way it's more, made by it, From. It's made by From Software. Okay. It's okay. I was thinking so, I was wrong and thinking it was a Dark Souls like game because that's all I've heard about it. Yeah. Well, there's like From Software is still making From Software shit. Yeah. They've been making the same obtuse, weird From Software shit since like 1994. Like, have you ever played any of the old Kingsfield games or even any of the Armored Core games? Like, the first couple of Armored Cores yeah. are fucking I played Armored dumb. Core. I love them. Yeah. But they're dumb. <laughs> like, they like make good. no sense in some areas, and they play like shit, but they're great. Now, this game, all I know about this game is people are really excited about Biomutant, and uh, my buddy at his PC shop has it as a background on his PC. <laughs> oh, really? Um, Yeah, I don't really know anything about it, but there's numbers popping up and shit, and I love that. 
Yeah, it's like this weird uh, open world game. So, like, when you start off, like, you choose your DNA, essentially. Okay. And there's different ways to adjust, like, your DNA over time. It's so, like the, the look of the character is all dependent on the DNA you chose. And how so often as you, can you change the DNA, do you know? Like, that's kind of like the whole game is, like, your, your upgrade, your leveling up. Okay. Is, like, you're swapping out, like, different parts of your body essentially with new DNA. Okay. So like if you go to like a a cold area, there's, you know, elemental stuff. So there's DNA that makes it better for you to be in the cold, but makes it worse for you to be in the hot. And then there's, you know, different weapons to, you know, find the different abilities you get. Yeah, like it's made like a lot of the the team that are working on it are people used to work for like Avalanche. What do they make? They made uh, the Just Cause games. Oh, okay. God, this is so, so fucking cool. Yeah, it's this weird, fun little game that's, uh, you know, it's coming out sometime 2019. 2019? Okay, I was just looking that up. Yeah, initial release in yeah. 2019. Yeah, they haven't set a hard date on it. Because, you know, they're a small THQ studio. Nordic. Yeah, it's a THQ Nordic game. It's much like... Dark Side of Three, they're finally hitting a wave of ever since they, you know, picked up a lot of the a lot of the studios and yeah. some of the talent that had been part of THQ when they bought up a bunch of that stuff, where they're actually getting original games being put out now. This looks so fucking cool. Can we just watch this for the rest of the podcast? <laughs> oh, I think he's changing. They, yeah, yeah. You just go to the menu and you know, you and just change your stuff, bubble. swap it's it out. Bubbling dudes. It's Katamari Damacy now. All right, I got to get this game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I want it. Like, it's cool. What? Uh, what is it on? It's going to be pretty much on all the big platforms. Oh, I don't God. think they're... I don't think they have a Switch version. That I don't... I don't need this game on Switch. But it's PC, Xbox, PS4. Okay. everything. Those are guaranteed. Well, without Switch. That's awesome. Okay, I got it. I'm excited about this now. <laughs> I'm super excited about this. All right, so let's see. What do we got next? See if there's anything that's going to top that. Maybe. I don't know what the hell this is, but you're interested in it. Sable? So, yeah, Sable is one of those weird indie games that popped up. It's that pretty. just looks super cool. Uh, it seems to be a rather chill game. It seems to be kind of like a, a weird, like cyberpunkish. Reminds me like, of Journey. Yeah, like it has a lot of the the aesthetics of Journey of like the cape physics and you know wandering the desert. A journey means, but blurs. apparently, apparently, a lot of the game plays a lot like you know exploring, like in Breath of the Wild. Okay. So you're just kind of out there exploring these areas. You're looking for a new mask. So, like, part of the tribe you you belong to, like, you know, the coming-of-age ritual is going out and finding your mask. So, these weird shrines and locations, you know, you, like, it's your choice which one you go and pick. Okay. So, you can just kind of, according to, like, one of the interviews I saw with the developer, you can basically just run out there, just grab the mask, and go back home. But so much of this game is just going out there exploring like uh it has a bubble that kind of works like the glider from breath of the wild so you just jump and bubble and glide down okay uh you get on the the little bike and you ride around you climb anything pretty much just jump up you have like a stamina bar i want to say too where you just free climb anything that's a surface that'll let you climb it's it's again a game that there's no hard release date on, but it just it just looks fascinating. Yeah, 2019 it'll be on Mac, PC, and Xbox One, according to Giant Bomb. Yeah, it was a, it was originally revealed at the Xbox conference in E3. I want to say. Huh. Okay. I must have just missed that. That looks really neat. If 
if it's like mostly an exploring game, I'd be into that. Yeah, they've not shown anything combat related. It's all just been wandering this world. Yeah. Hmm. That might be good. Good little chill game. Now this... The music's cool. This one here does not appear to be a chill game. GTFO? Yeah, so they announced this, I want to say, last year at E3? I want to say some of the people that worked on Payday are part of the studio. Okay. And and the game itself is essentially if like Left for Dead oh, Jesus. and Payday had a baby in the alien universe. Huh. So it is kind of like, you know, one of these run based like horde fighting games. Yeah, it reminds me of Killing Floor. Well, you're going in and you're you're going to get loot. You're going deeper and deeper in these tunnels. Your prisoner's trapped here and the warden's sending you to recover shit. And deeper and deeper you go into the Earth's core, I want to say, the weirder and weirder these fucking monsters get. Okay. See, that sounds so, interesting to me. If the monsters like, continue to get weird and... As long as things evolve, because a lot of these games, they don't evolve. They just... They're just grindy. So you work together or die together. All right. So yeah, like a lot of this is kind of taking like that formula of, you know, those kind of horde based, like go get the loot or get to the objective games. Like, yeah. you know, but it's actually like really fucking terrifying. I mean, killing floor is pretty scary. <laughs> Payday is pretty scary. You ever see all those cops coming at you? Yeah, I played a lot of Payday too. I don't know this. Like, I've played too many of these types of games now. Right? I just, I don't give a fuck. Well, like, like it's it's the design, it's the setting, the mood. Like, if you actually sure. sit down and watch some of the stuff, you know, with the audio on, and if you hear any of like the people that have actually had hands-on experience with it, oh sure. Like it has like a tracker that straight up looks like the fucking blip 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 from aliens you know <laughs> right like it's it's really touching on a lot of that sci-fi horror stuff i mean if it's a I'm good one it. i'll play it but i've you know i've played vermintide and killing floor and all these other games that are just yeah i'm just i'm way over that genre but that being said if it's really good i would play it like i'm yeah, not like the type vermintide to be like too. I'm not gonna it was play a great that. Experience the first run through. See, I didn't even but, experience all the way through. I got very bored of that game fast. But again, you know, well, I'm just I'm I'm burnt out on that genre. Well, I want to say with that GTFO, like so much of that game is actively avoiding starting the horde. Okay, like it. Like, cause you die really fucking fast. Like, it's not like a game where you're just like a tank fighting, you know, waves of. Right. So that like, would be how it's like payday, where you could just, you know, take it very cautiously, do stealth, and get out of there without any real fighting. Yeah. So that's interesting. But on the opposite side of stealth is uh, just cause four. Which I never oh, got man. into these games, but they are fun. Like I've loved all of them so far. Like I, well, I've loved all the Avalanche's work that I've played. Just Cause one through three. I love Mad Max. Mad Max. I'm is super awesome. interested for Rage Two because they're making Rage Two. What is happening with this tornado? So it's this country, like the evil dictator guy, has these like wind cannons. Has he not killed the evil dictator guy yet? <laughs> that whole point of the well, series. Like, well, they go to all different countries. Okay. Like he, like so, the first game, like he's like working for the U.S. government to go in and essentially kill the dictator of this like South American country to start a coup to take over. Like America doesn't want this guy there, and you're going in there to fuck shit up. Yeah. Uh, Just Cause 2, you're doing, you know, the same thing in, like, a Korea analog. Uh, Just Cause 3, you're doing it in Rico's home country. 
Right. Because some dictator came in and started taking over his his native country. You know, he belongs to. Yeah, I should I should really play three. Now this one takes place in a place like somewhere down like Thailand, huh. one of those S- Southeast Asian places. I want to say, but uh, they <laughs> they've got a new game engine. For oh, this okay. One. It's called the Apex Engine. I'm hoping <laughs> that it doesn't have a massive memory leak like Just Cause Three did, because you know it took months. And months after the game came out, for Just Cause 3 to not have massive like frame drops Damn. and performance issues. This game looks fucking bonkers. Yeah, like <laughs> like they they embraced absolutely going at eight oh shit. Oh my god. Cause like every game they've escalated the, the destruction. This, so like you've probably seen a lot me. of gifts. Go ahead. I was gonna say you've probably seen a lot of gifts from Just Cause 3. Of they added like an upgrade to like these little C4 mines that made them thrusters. So then, like, you'd see a guy run up to a cow in a field, put a C4 thruster on the cow's ass, and detonate it. And you just see a Jesus. cow flying through the air and all this other shit. So, in Just Cause 4, like, so you had this grappling hook the entire series. Yeah. And they added in like Just Cause 3. You can now like well, just cause two. You can tether stuff together. It's like you put one point somewhere, put another point the other place. It's a steel cable holding two things together. Okay. So, in just cause three, they added where you could like tighten or loosen the tether. So like I could just tag two different guys that run at me with guns and just like forcibly like sl- slam them together in midair. By retracting that cable. <laughs> yeah, like you're you're doing crazy shit. So now in Just Cause 4, they've put like these floating balloons like the Fulton system from Metal Gear Solid 5. So you can put lifters on things. So basically you shoot the tether into a thing and hit whatever the button is to make it a, a lifter and a balloon comes up and it raises the thing. That's awesome. But you can also hit a button to make it a booster so there's a whole scene in that Just Cause 4 gameplay trailer where he puts a like they switch it to the tether because it's more accurate than the throwing the thing and yeah. having a grenade arc. So you now you can like pinpoint place these things where you want them since you're shooting them like a gun basically. So he shoots like the four corners of this like crate with balloons to raise it up and on the back he puts like four of those boosters. And so the balloon, the balloons raise his crate up, and he's just like actively queuing up the boosters. And now he's flying this goddamn shipping crate like a dirigible. It's like straight up some Octorock, you know, shit from Breath of the Wild. There you <laughs> go, found it. <laughs> so yeah, they've really escalated just like all the base mechanics of doing weird, wacky physics shit. This reminds me of Mercenaries. Yeah, th- this is what Mercenaries wanted to be. Yeah. That's a fucking good game. I actually... Mercenaries 2 was horribly disappointing. Yeah, I have it on... I must have it on Xbox. I don't remember how I played that recently. But yeah, I played that recently in that game. That game still holds up. That's a good game. Yeah, the first Mercenaries is still fun. But uh, yeah, maybe I should get Just Cause Three. I just I'm also kind of over that open world Grand Theft Auto thing, and I feel like Just Cause. I feel I do feel like I'm missing out not playing Just Cause. Yeah, Just Cause is just ridiculous. Uh, now Just Cause Three, like the DLC pack, like the whole bundle is on sale all the time. Like it's on yeah, sale right now is. on PlayStation. It may be on sale also on the Xbox. But uh, like sure. in the DLC pack, like they add like, like this booster suit to like your wingsuit to where you straight up are Iron Man. That's awesome. <laughs> like and that's like I appreciate up, developers that just don't give a fuck. <laughs> like you like you've got your wingsuit and you got like these thr- this thruster pack on the back. So like if you you know pace out you know like your fuel for flying, you're just straight up Iron Man. 
they had like a mech in that game with that DLC that just like smashes shit and oh, shoots shit. That's amazing. And there's like a giant floating air fortress in one of them. Like it's utterly ridiculous nonsense, and it's great. But again, it still doesn't perform that great on the console yeah. versions. Well, I think I know where the next uh, uh, Just Cause game will take place. And it's wherever the hell you want it to build this Tropico game. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever played Tropico? I've played, uh, I want to say, three and four for a little bit. These games are too good. <laughs> they are so much fun. And if you've never played Tropico, it's basically, um, I had it. I lost it. What the hell's the name of the guy in Cuba? It's basically you know, it's Fidel Castro Fidel simulator. Castro simulator, yeah. <laughs> and it's fucking great. You literally you have to build your island and you can build it lots of different ways. But you can make it like a, a tourist trap, or you can make it uh like an, a military militarized island. You can do so many different things and be successful. It's it is city skylines with communism. Yeah. With a and pure dictatorship. It doesn't have to be though. Yeah. I mean, you will you, always be in power. But... Of, you got a couple of, you know, diplomatic options there. Yeah. And you have to be diplomatic with the world. Like you have to get money from America and England and you have to, you know, deal with who you're getting money from in different places and I love Tropico. It's so damn good. And you actually, you have different dictators you can use that have different abilities. Yeah, so it's trying to getting to be civilization at that point. It's <laughs> fucking great. Those games, those are great games. And Tropico is one of those games that goes on sale for mega cheap. Yeah, I want to say that's like well, the only game franchise Calypso is still putting out. No, they put out a lot of games that are just all shit. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. I don't you know, know what is happening over at that studio. If you want to go like super deep, weird, random game, it was Majesco, not Calypso. But I always like, you know, associate those two companies because they always put out trash. They're like right. these weird European companies, like publishing all sorts of horse shit. But Majesco put out a game called Advent Rising. Oh. Oh, why was that like really famous? Doesn't it? Weren't they giving like a so, million yeah. dollars away? Yeah, so there was a million dollar giveaway that just disappeared one night because that game was terrible and no one did bought it disappear. It. Yeah, like they just said, "Hey, this doesn't happen. This doesn't exist anymore." Oh no! And people were super fucking mad because, like, like the story was kind of cool. Like they they got like the base story idea from Orson Scott Card. Yeah, and uh. But it was just this awful like third person action game that kind of played like like Tomb Raider almost. Yeah, was it a good game? I don't remember. No, it was not. Like okay. I played through the entire game. The enemies straight up looked like the fucking Covenant from Halo. Where oh. they even had like the split mouth. Damn. You know? <laughs> like it, it was just so bad. And like the only reason anybody was interested in buying that game was that million dollar yeah. giveaway. They probably knew it too. Yeah. And then it flopped horribly and they just canceled that giveaway like ASAP and act like it never happened. <laughs> I got into a straight up argument with somebody over uh Tropico because we were talking about uh Calypso and they only put out garbage other than Tropico and he would say Tropico is just as bad as the other games and it's not. Like you no. can't even Trop- argue that Tropico is a bad game. Tropico is at worst a good game. Yeah, it's well made. It's predictable. It it's, is. You know that it's and that it's, game every time. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's iterative. It gets a little bit better every time, and they do release them often. <laughs> I can't believe they're coming they're out like every six. other year, essentially at this point. Yeah, it's a little silly, but I don't know. I feel like. That company feels like Crazy Uncle. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> it's Calypso. Their game will be out a week and they'll drop the price by 90%. <laughs> yeah, I want to say also Majesco was a company that put out the Blood Rain games back in the day. Those were good, weren't they? 
they they were all right. Like they were like mediocre like action games. They just had some really weird, interesting like mechanics to them. So like yeah. the I remember the second Blood Rain game. Like there's this whole thing of where she had like these like dagger heels on that were like weapons. So like like she would kill some people occasionally and like stab them in the face with her heels because they were like stiletto knives. But you could like skate on rails with them. It's like like you had some straight up Tony Hawk, you know, <laughs> rail grinding. Right. You know, as this, you know, Dom Pier, this female like half vampire. That's right. I hate that, dude. Majesco, I hate that I remember the fucking name. Right, Dompier. Majesco is the company that merged with a biotech firm. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? But they did put out like a really good Blood Rain game that was like a side-scrolling like Castlevania game huh. on the 360 PS3 that was fucking amazing. It was like old school like pixel art hard like platformer huh that game was cool the other ones were just awful like tits and ass like bait like sin episodes so <laughs> in november 2017 majesco announced it had re-entered the video game business after having previously been bought back to a bought brought back to a privately held company released their romans from mars onto steam what the Ooh. fuck is Romans from Mars? Never heard about that. Yeah. Oh, what is this hot garbage? Oh, hold on a second. Hold on to your pants for this one. Oh, this is this is straight up garbage. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, man. The okay, video game go. publishing is weird. What the fuck is this? Why? Why is this how you re-enter the gaming world? This is some weird ass mobile game, but it's on Steam. Yeah, that is straight up so Trap just like... Shooter? It's a trap shooter. Oh my god. Okay. No more of this. Yeah, wow. Shrap shooter. Majesco's still dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying it right now. God damn. Oh, man, hard times. Apparently. <laughs> oh, fuck you. You know, that makes Speaking me. Of... Go ahead. I was going to say, that makes me think of like the meme that keeps getting posted about all these studios EA closed down. I was like, well, yeah, they did because those studios weren't financially viable and there's no guarantee that those studios would ever would have ever stayed alive. Okay. Like, I right. just I, I hate the blaming of EA for this. It's like video games are hard. Game companies that make great shit close down and go out of business because nobody's buying them enough to justify. And companies the cost. like Romans that make Romans from Mars, they get published. <laughs> Yeah, but again, much like a lot of the uh, THQ Nordic tactic, that game was probably made in a country with very low... Uh, in a day. With low, you know, pay requirements yeah. and, you know, cost of living. You know, that's the thing with THQ Nordic is, like, they're apparently, like, super fucking skilled at budgeting and, you know, like, hiring developers in these places that will be cheaper... To right. make these products, they're aiming for the middle, and I can appreciate that. We need double A games. That's what THQ Nordic is. Cool. Speaking of hard times, <laughs> Destiny's you came out with a new uh, video, and it's actually really fucking cool. It's a uh, <laughs> cinematic. Just, just, just cut. You just need to cut it out of your heart, there, Jacob. I'm going back, man. Forsaken. Don't, I'm going don't, back. I'm don't, going. Don't I'm doing let it. it. In. I'm doing it. Oh no. I'm. Ex- I'm pretty excited. I'm actually gonna go play a bunch of Destiny tomorrow at my dad's house. I know you fucking don't come back crying to me when it breaks <laughs> your heart. <laughs> I don't know, man. Forsaken. Like they're they're listening. They seem like they're listening. Um. 
God, the cinematic is badass. Like, it's cool yeah. to see the abilities you use in game use in like a cinematic way. Because he uses. It the also trip sucks that Kade's gonna be gone. Yeah, but man, that's fucking interesting, though. Like, At least he went out like a boss. Yeah, and they talked about uh, in a video uh, with um, Fire Team chat from IGN. One of the devs was talking about they talked about killing like Petrov, but they were like, "That's not as interesting." Like, the, the, the fact that they're killing such a main character, such a character that everyone loves. That's like one the of the only of, characters anybody likes. I <laughs> love Zavala. Zavala's yeah, Zavala is great. Like I like I told you earlier about you know when I was mentioning Carl Lumley, I also yeah. always think about Lance Reddick. And you want to talk about you know anthology series? Like I always thought, if they ever do a reboot of like the Twilight Zone, Lance Reddick needs to be the fucking narrator for everything. That'd be cool. But this cinematic here is really right here. This part where his ghost gets destroyed, I audibly gasped. Like. <laughs> That's such a major thing to happen in the Destiny universe. This whole expansion is supposed to be such a major thing. And I'm excited. Like, I, I want it, I really want it to be good. I need it to be good. I want to get back into Destiny. Papa needs his fix. I do. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited about it. Hopefully it's good. I don't know how much I'm going to play Destiny tomorrow. Like. Because it's still, I need new things to do. Is the thing like I'm I'm tired yeah. of all the things I've already done. I've done everything in Destiny I can. So we'll see how much I play tomorrow. Probably not much. So, Got all that uh, graveyard keeper and rabbits to be getting back to. I do, I do though, <laughs> because I have an experience. This is something I was talking about earlier. I don't typically replay games because I've already experienced them. Yeah. Destiny is a good example of you experience it over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> and that's like the one game that's got me into doing that. So we'll see if it gets me back. Um so one game that I'm I'm interested in checking out, but I haven't played the other ones. These guys made uh this is Desperados three. What was the other game they just made? It's like a stealth RTS. Uh, sh- uh, Shadow Tactics? Yes. The guys who made Shadow Tactics are making this. Yeah. So I don't know if this is also going to be a stealth game. I don't think so. But I love Western stuff. Well, I mean, it looks like it has some stealth options. Sure. And that would be great. This looks more to me like a XCOM type of thing. Look, looks a lot like Commandos. Yes, that's true. We've got a specific squad trying to get through a level and do challenges where it's half tactics, half puzzle game. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. I don't know. I've never played the other two Desperado games. I might have to look into that. So that's one to keep an eye on. Uh, another one, I'm... Let's see, this is just a trailer, not gameplay. Another one I'm excited to try, and apparently Anno 1404 is really good, but it's Anno 1800. Um, it's like it's like a city builder game. But yeah, it's, it's another 1800s. city builder game, yeah. But don't say just another city builder game, fuck you. Well, they did <laughs> They did the one that was like 2100 that was like yeah. in the future. And then they did an underwater one, but none of them were apparently very good. But the original, the 1404, is supposed to be very good. And actually, I need to see. I don't know if I have it or not. <laughs> actually, starting <laughs> up a... Steam during a podcast is a bad fucking idea because it uses all my bandwidth. Yeah. Oh, that's, please that's... don't drop frames. There we go. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to try this. I love Banished. I love City Builders in general. So I'm really curious to see how this gate this plays out. Um, I love Civilization and Rise of Nations and all that stuff. So, and Planet I'm Coaster, interested. you were deep into. Yes, I got to play more Planet Coaster. There's not enough time to play all the things. See, that's why I've been thankfully like forcing myself in, uh, you know, completable experiences I can be done with. I do not own you know, any of any kind. Um. Yeah, I. That's why I ask you whenever you recommend a game. How long is it? Because <laughs> I want to be able to complete it. 
As yeah, I say, I don't I, know if I'm going to complete Graveyard Keeper. I like, might. I want to finish something. Yeah, <laughs> I might complete Graveyard Keeper like over time. That might be the game I go back to. If I, well, maybe. I'm going to not play it for a day and forget everything. I have to keep fucking notebooks on that game. Yeah, that's that's one of those games where, you know, like, I, I wish more games, like, I remember way back in the day of playing, like, Morrowind, one of the mods was to have, a like, a pin for the map you could drop and leave a note on it. That's Because cool. that game had, like, absolutely no, like, worthwhile like log system like yeah had a log book but it had this fucking like short like fucking paragraphs of horse shit yeah like, and then i entered the cave and there was a bear it's like i don't know where the fuck that was man speaking like tell of, me where it was speaking of morrowind look at this underworld ascendant what yeah, is this so, so underworld was uh it's it's like an old school like immersive sim kind of like rpg game it kind of looks like Underground Skyrim. Uh, like Blackreach? What? Like what? Like, like Blackreach was the Dwarven City. Oh. In Skyrim? I don't remember. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, the giant Dwarven City that was like oh, all okay, of like yeah. the underground, essentially, of Skyrim. Yeah, this is just... It looks fucking cool. It's the Underworld of Sense September. Yeah, so like... It comes out in September. Yeah, so that was a Kickstarter game, I want to say. And it's finally getting to the point where people are going to, you know, get hands on it. A lot of that game is like super weird, deep systems and interactions. Oh, shit. This is an Ultima game. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's that sounds right. Huh. What makes it a sim, though? Well, like I said, much like old school Deus Ex, like okay, yeah, I can open this door, I can break it open, I can use this spell to change the door to something else. Okay. Much like, you know, like Prey is an immersive sim, where it it gives you a tool set and lets you, you know, kind of loose in there. This looks interesting. Yeah, they asked for 600000 on Kickstarter. They got 860000 Some. I want to say one of the one of the OG guys from like the original Underworld game yes. is working. Paul Neuroth, the designer of the original Underworld games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So apparently EA granted him a license to use the Underworld setting, lore, and characters. Though it did not allow for the use of the Ultima brand. That's interesting. And uh, he said that they've limited the game's budget. If you're spending $50 million, you need to reach as many people as possible. You can't experiment. That's interesting. So they're going to do experiments with this. They're doing weird shit in that game, yeah. So I I don't know if it's going to actually work out well, but they're going to go out swinging at least. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I mean, I'll play it. I'll check this out. I I respect a developer that's like, we're going to take risks. That's awesome. That means they're going to do something different. Because, yeah, as we've already established, you know, the couple episodes we've done now of this, like, I'm I'm super down for weird. Yeah. <laughs> like, I am down for obscure and weird, which uh, I thought of something when we were talking about a lot of these platformers. And, like, super hard. Like, it's not super old, but it's, like, deep obscure. Yeah. Did you ever check out Cloudberry Kingdom? Yeah, well, I've watched Achievement Hunter play a lot of it. They've played a lot of that game. Yeah, like, that game is, like, super fucking weird. I played a lot of that, too. Yeah, Yeah, that's, like, one of their staple games, along with, like, Minecraft. (laughs) It was just like, oh, hey, like, all these guys that were doing speedruns and had all these tool-assisted programs to do speedruns and all these weird ROM hacks of Mario levels... It's like some of those guys got together essentially and they made a okay. game that was essentially that. Like, all right, there's sliders and it's going to procedurally generate this shit like the game Worms. So yeah, there's always like an actual. Like some of the, the newer levels, some of the end levels, they don't even know are possible. Yeah, because it, the, like they've got a the, an algorithm system because like in the original release launch, like the shit was all possible. Like it had sliders for 
you know, hazards, enemies, you know, different variables. And you could like turn all of, all those up and watch the AI play it. Okay. And you were like, yeah, you know, there's like, a little bouncy ball fuck? thing you can follow. Well, you can actually like watch it like frame by frame the AI playthrough, you know, on the versions that I had played on the PS3. Right. But cool. yeah, man, that that game, I got like a third of the way through like a level it generated on like the hardest possible settings. And like I just had to give up. It's like I'm already bald, but this is gonna make me bald on like my tits and my <laughs> ass cheeks. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna look like I have like body cancer. <laughs> like the, the game, game is, is stressing fucking me. nuts. Yeah, it's super silly and it's just raw platforming at its finest. And it, it's also like co op or not co op. Yeah, the, yeah you can do up to like four player, I wanna say. Yeah, there's four people on that screen. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely four of those guys that play it. But uh God, I wanna see Try to see how many Achievement Hunter have done, because they've done a lot of them, and they have more coming out. Let's see. But bless you? I know, that's my roommate in the other oh, room. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just sneezed really hard. Yeah, they, also, Achievement Hunter played a lot of that game, and that's where I yeah. watched it. He also shits like a homeless man at a truck stop. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Dude, it's hideous. Like that's terrifying. <laughs> All right, how the fuck did we get off on a non-gamescom thing? I, um, I, I don't. I don't. No, we were talking about weird with Underworld, and it reminded me that I thought about this game earlier. Found a game that potentially is going to be shit. World War Z. I hope this is based on the book, not the movie. It looks to be based more on like the book reality. From the little so. bit I've seen now, some of the actual like base mechanics look all right, yeah. and it's made by Saber Interactive, which they're pretty good at making mediocre products. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the, the the what kind of a fucking insult compliment was that? <laughs> well, did you ever play? I think it's called like Time Shift. Oh, that and sounds real familiar. It's like, yeah, the whole gimmick was like... Oh, yeah, that game was You right. had a time... Re- yeah, like I said, like everything Saber Interactive done, I don't think anyone said more than it was all right. Let's see. They, uh... Oh, well, they fucking... Shaq Fu. They, they, they were involved in some of that. Okay. But that's an awful mobile game with Quake. highly racist... Barack Obama inspired DLC. Uh, what do they have to do with the fuck? Why? Why are they on the list of Quake champions? Oh, this is well, the engine. They do, well, they do a lot of like intermediary work. They're a lot like uh, 3D realms. Like 3D realms are like the guys that did like yeah. Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah, and part got, of the reason Duke they got like. Halo Master Chief Collection on here and Quake Champions and Shaq Fu, yeah, World War Z. Yeah, they're good like technological engineers. Okay. Because you know, most of the, like the games they actually made themselves, like that time shift game and other stuff was on their Saber engine. Like they had built their own engine from the ground up. Sa- t- uh, wow. Time shift is at least a neat concept. Yeah, like it was crazy to me when I saw like years ago like the initial like tech demos of that game and some of the ideas they had and then so much of that stuff was so hard to implement they just had to like scrap a lot of it <laughs> and then the final implementations weren't that good it's like you're gonna roll in here and you're gonna you know kill this guy and break this box and in that box you're gonna find the thing you need and then you're just gonna rewind time and just walk away and no one will know mm. anything happened I will say the the shooting in this World War Z, like the the gameplay looks pretty good. Yeah, they're they're competent like engine makers and like gameplay makers. It's just like the actual like overall packages of the games they end up you know being like you know primary devs on usually aren't very good. Like they're they're well, like it I said, looks like it's just another fucking horde shooter. Yeah, so but it is thing, more though. like. 
objective, like get to point right. A to point B. It looks like it's it's a zombie game, but you don't have to shoot them in the head. You just have to shoot them. Because there's so many of them. But, I don't know. If Brad Pitt's not in it, I'm out. Well, he's, he, his likeness is not in this, from what I can tell. I'm out! It's these four characters, the whole game, so it's... I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Yeah, it's all good. All right, next we have World War Battlefield 3. I mean, uh, World War 3. Ooh, this just looks like... Okay, <laughs> they made this. Good job. Yeah. Keep it moving. Like, it's like, oh, hey, it's all the shit I never enjoyed about Battlefield, just done, you know, with less, you know, production. Oh, my God. You just see the animation for that, the C4. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, my it, God. What is this I shit? Mean, it, it, this has to be a free to play game. Otherwise, this game has no hope. Let's see. Also, I I'm a I'm a bit of an SEO guy owning a website and whatnot. World War Three, not the best fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that, that's pretty generic. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, like everything about this game just seemed fucking generic. Yeah, it's just strong team play, national armed forces, rural locations, full body awareness. What does that mean? Robust uh, it, ballistic it, system, advanced armors, lifelike weapon. I still don't know if I'm describing Battlefield. Wow. Key feature, modern Battlefield experience. What the fuck? Do yeah, we this need, looks like... Do we need more Battlefield games? Is this something I'm not aware of? Well, I think the people that are tired of playing Battlefield 4 want another modern Battlefield game. And, you know, DICE isn't making them currently. Eh. Speaking of which, though, Battlefield (laughs) (laughs) 5. I mean, some of the, like, gameplay changes and, like, the moment-to-moment stuff in Battlefield 5 looks interesting, but... Oh, absolutely. Now, I said last week I kind of want to get Battlefield 5. Um, It was kind of sort of pointed out in a video I watched on YouTube. It's like World War 1, but with newer guns. Yeah. And that's pretty much going to be the main thing. I mean, like, you can hitch new stuff. Like, you actually have, like, a cannon hitched on your back or your tank. Um, There's also, be... like, mm-hmm. I was going to say, one of the support class actually can build, like, like, right. like sandbag walls and put, a like, a turret on it or, like, a mounted gun and other shit. Like, they're kind of varying the classes to be more specific. It's going to be a very good game. I don't think it's a game I need to play right away. Yeah. I mean, shit, I got Battlefield 1 and all the DLC for 9 bucks a couple weeks ago. Like, I don't know. It's weird and, for and me. They, Go ahead. I was going to say, and then they regularly give away like the DLC every now and then for like yeah. Battlefield 4 oh, and Hardline. So that'll eventually start happening. This is probably the Battle Royale mode because there's like a circle of fire closing in. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, DICE isn't making the Battle Royale mode. No? There's a different studio working on it. Okay. Much like, you know, that Saber Interactive thing. Yeah. It's like Raven Software. You know, they made a bunch of cool games. Like, Raven Software made, like, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance game. and Oh, that's a good game. Like, they also made uh, the Wolfenstein game before Machine Games made yeah. Wolfenstein. Which that game was all right. It was weird. And also it's canon in the machine games game. Like like what? Yeah, like (laughs) somehow like the the machine games thing takes place pretty much like direct sequel almost, I wanna say. Cause like the, the intro part for you know the new order. Yeah. The first one that machine games made. We're, we're we're in the World War Two area before BJ gets into a coma and wakes up in the sixties. Right. I think that part is kind of like a direct continuation, but I want to say that Raven Software Wolfenstein game had like weird magic and all this other occult shit. 
that you had know. powers to use. Right. I don't know if I ever played it. I, I played it for like two, three hours. Like I got to a certain point and then I realized like this just isn't like yeah worth my time right now. Needs more guns. Needs dual wield. Needs mechs. <laughs> but yeah, also Raven Software does a lot of the multiplayer stuff on the Call of Duty franchises. Oh, okay. That's why I know that. So, yeah, a lot of these companies have a bunch of intermediate studios that do other stuff. Because I want to say, like, EA Motive works on a lot of stuff between, like, I think they're doing stuff for both. They did stuff for Battlefront, for Battlefield, and I think they're doing a lot of work for, like, uh, Anthem. Okay. So they're not, like, the primary dev on anything, but they're doing a lot of the grunt work. Oh, did they make X Men Origins Wolverine? Uh, n- it's on yeah. their, their, their website. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's Raven. Huh. That game was cool. They made some good shit. They made some cool stuff. They're they're a weird company. Yeah. But you know they've spent you know the past ten years in obscurity, you know just grinding away at multiplayer tech for every right. Call of Duty every year. So this, I never played the original of this Call of Cthulhu. Um, I do love this universe. Like, I have a bunch of board games pretty much based on it. Um, and I never, yeah, I never got to play, I rather never got to really get into the original Cthulhu series. Because it's not a very intuitive game. But, uh... It's kind of like an investigative first person. I think there's shooter elements in it. Did you ever play it? I was going to say there was a Call of Cthulhu game on the original Xbox. Yep. It's also on PC. I played way back in the day. That was just kind of like this weird, like for some reason, it kind of gave me vibes of like the Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay. Because like it was just this first person, like, story interactive game. Now the Chronicles of Riddick game was like an action game of you stealthing and like breaking necks and like fighting things. But the moments in between of you just walking around, exploring this world and seeing all this lore and, you know, character building through just these random conversations. I pl- I played both those games kind of like close to each other. Cause that Chronicles of Riddick game was also on the original Xbox or, and they did a remaster of it and like a pseudo sequel on the PS3 360 area called Dark Athena. Cool stuff. Huh. Yeah, I think the original game takes place in the town of Innsmouth. With Innsmouth? I don't know how you say that. In, in, Innsmouth, yeah. yeah. Is, uh, I can't tell. This looks like it might be the Miskatonic University. Yeah, because uh, this one takes place in like this city that's starting to be like sinking into the ground and the water. I think there's a lot of areas you go that are flooded. Okay. I really, really want a good Cthulhu game. That would be fucking awesome. Because these that guys that are making this Cthulhu game are the guys that have made those Sherlock Holmes games that keep coming out. Like Really? Those are supposed to be really good. They're like interesting like story games to play through, yeah. but they're not like good game games, you know, like, like they do well with presentation and telling the story of that world, but well, yeah, I think they're good, of, like point and clicks, basically. They're, they're, they're mediocre production, but yeah. high quality writing. Well, this looks kind of crazy. It's not like they're spiders, which is like a French studio that makes a lot of the other like weird focus home interactive stuff. Like the, like that fucking orc, the, the, game where you like the little orc stealthing around everywhere there's like two of them yeah what's interesting to me about this is like i said i've played a bunch of the board games and the I- little icons that they're ooh, that's creepy the little icons that they're using like when he investigated that painting it said psychology for some reason and it yeah. had that little brain i wonder if by investigating certain things it makes you crazier because it's using the same kind of little icons from the board games yeah this is really yep. interesting for some reason when that like that shadowy figure went through the doorway and you saw like the echo yeah 
reminded me of an old PS1 game called Echo Knight. Well, is this going to be our obscure game of the week? It's really fucking obscure and really stupid. Echo Knight, like, is it a knight? Yeah, N I G H T. It's it was one of those super weird, obtuse, confusing games. The first person like horror kind of suspense thing. Uh, it's on PlayStation. Yeah, original PS One. What the hell? Oh, this looks weird. Yeah, like it. Absolutely fucking weird. Because it's a From Software game. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Of course, now yeah. it's just going to be a black screen. Okay, there we go. Hey, this looks weird as shit. Yeah, I mean, this was like them trying to tell a story and the same kind of engine they built like Kingsfield on. So it is this awkward first person like all sorts of random shit you click on. It's kind of like an old school like point and click adventure game, but like it's active, like first person. Like you got to go find the shit and touch stuff. It's like some of the puzzles and some of the secrets are so fucking like like no one would have ever figured this out. Okay. Oh my so god. So some like of it's simple. Items. Yeah, dude, it's so goddamn tedious. Jesus. I played through this with a friend of mine. Way back in the day. And, uh, I can't believe the patience we had. <laughs> <laughs> back then? Yeah, man. Like, it, it was not good. Like, all those Kingsfield games were not good. Huh. Those were just, like, the precursor to Dark Souls. Right. So, one thing, you said that, that you thought that city was sinking. It's funny you say I, that. Because there's a game coming out called The Sinking City. It looks very totally have, like it might have mixed them I up. I would say that's <laughs> no, I think that's where I mixed them up. So like yeah. the Call of Cthulhu thing, I uh, I think this is the game. The Sinking City is the one made by the Sherlock Holmes guys. Oh, okay. Let's. But it does have a lot of like the Cthulhu kind of mythology of weird. Uh, you know, eldritch horrors. Yes, it is the Sinking City. That's the guys who made the the Sherlock games. Yeah, for some reason, I thought that Call of Cthulhu game and this one were the same. But I was, you know, I was mistaken and really need to pee. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. I'll I was going to say, like, my brain was insanely preoccupied. <laughs> I'll be right back. We'll take a little break. All right, and we're back. It's fine. I'll just cut that out of the audio version. Yeah, it's uh, thankfully my bathroom is like right across the hall. Yeah, so this <sighs> uh, I was just reading about the Call of Cthulhu game, and apparently there's not a whole lot more information on it. Yeah, I think that one was just recently announced, and uh, the the guys that made the other game, The Sinking City, have done a lot more like hands-on demonstrations for people. And apparently Call of Cthulhu comes out in October. (laughs) Yeah, this Sinking City game looks really interesting. Like, it is, yeah, another Cthulhu-looking thing, which I'm okay with because we don't have enough games in that universe. I don't know if it's actually in that universe. Probably not. I would guess. There's never enough cosmic horror. Is that what you would call this kind of thing? The the like the Lovecraft stuff the yeah is because it's you know the the universe at large these are yes, the old gods right. and occasionally a lot of these creatures are coming from outer space essentially it's inspired by the universe of H P Lovecraft okay yeah that's too bad but you know that's fine as long as it's inspired by. But I would love to play some more Cthulhu type stuff. I have Mansions of Madness and some other Cthulhu games that are a lot of fun. And my buddy Brian from the Lord Brothers is really into it. I think he's read some of the books and whatnot. So he doesn't play video games. Maybe we'll actually be able to get him to play video games with this one. <laughs> oh, that looks you know, it reminds stuff. me of 
you know, I always thought if I if I wrote a biography, I'd call it "At the Mountains of Sadness." <laughs> <laughs> Is that movie still in production? Um, but the Mountains of Madness. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, there's so many movies I see get announced that then just die suddenly, or like they come out like four years later, like direct to video never actually got a film release i know guillermo del toro was supposed to be making it yeah but like every other film project guillermo del toro has been involved in lately seems to get canceled yeah yeah i don't think he got it damn that's a weird flesh teddy bear it's still wet uh (laughs) gross i mean i missed that yeah uh, oh yeah, he's Guillermo del Toro is making uh, scary stories to read in the dark. Do you ever read that as a kid? Yeah, they were fucking never weird. very good. Well, yeah, they I, were weird. I remember them being very weird, very very upsetting. Yeah, they they were they were not really meant for kids. No, like, they were like you know like. Early twenties goosebumps, like yeah, yeah, they're fucked up. They're they're goosebumps for college kids, essentially. I like how this podcast I've talked about how I really don't like horror and uh, Resident Evil Two remake. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, I I cannot wait. Yeah, I think we've talked about this quite a bit already. I hope this is like essentially the same game with new or you know updated mechanics it looks like it is well they've also kind of changed some of the flow and added some new kind of bits like the whole idea of like finding the little diary of like the one cop he's holding it up he's like i think i figured it out how to get out of here like you know instead of like the these weird obscure like oh you've got the diamond key yeah so what does the journal do it kind of gives you like it's like the journal you keep to kind of clue you in onto these weird puzzles okay. of like how to move these statues or how to do that gotcha. to get to some of these certain areas. That's fine. That's you know for people that want that kind of thing, they can look at the journal. People that don't, they don't have to. Well, it's also you know like like I said, the 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 workflow of how you get from some of these areas is already different. Like right off the bat. Like some of these rooms you see in this demo, like like normally you go to like the right and then it forces you to go to the left. Right. And then you go around a whole different way than how you would have done in the original game. So I have a feeling a lot of these, you know, changes like with that journal, there's going to be new puzzles and not like all the same old puzzles. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I'll probably end up buying this. Yeah, I'm, it's a, it's a it's a day one buy for Fatty over here. Is it? A, no, it's on Xbox. Okay, good. It's it's a multiplayer. Yeah, good. it comes out. I want to say like January or February, something like that. It's the beginning of the year, and oh my god, I just I just need Resident Evil in my life again. And I guess we'll keep the whole. I don't know if this is horror, but this is at least. Something upsetting, kind of looking. A Plague Tale, in a sense. Is, is that that weird kind of like RPG? I don't know what this is. See, a Plague Oh, tale. no, this isn't the one I was thinking of. It's a gross game about billions of rats. <laughs> Way to go, Kotaku. Well, hey, that's uh, what the first Dishonored was. <laughs> it's a seamless blend of adventure and stealth gameplay deeply embedded in a dark medieval mystery set in the 14th century France at the height of the black death and appears to be taking some very video, very video game liberties when it comes to rat behavior. That's from Luke Plunkett at Kotaku. So that might be neat. Yeah. That straight up looks like dishonored right there. Yeah. With less magic and assassins and (laughs) yeah. And well, punk. I, lo- I love the idea of dishonored, you know, coining its own term, whale punk. 
well punk yeah so like all the technology essentially in the dishonored universe runs on oil derived out of the giant whales oh right it's like that's all their energy for all the crazy like walkers like just like that whatever that animal that looks like whales like the fat is so high energy that when they refine it in the fuel that's uh, that's their fuel source that is bizarre. They came up with their own yeah. thing. Well, that's what uh, people started calling it. Yeah. I don't. I don't think uh, you know Arcane called it that, but <laughs> okay, it's good and stuff, man. Enough horror. Now we're going into the Division Two. I'm so excited for this. March cannot come soon enough for me. I am beyond excited about this game. Uh, I've. I'm. I gotta get back into playing some more division. I don't think they've dropped any more shields, but that's. I don't think they have. I think when one or two more come out, I'll probably dive back into that and get them. But in the meantime, man, I'm just excited about this game. I'm excited for more information to come out about it. I don't think they said much of anything at Gamescom. They've shown some like longer like gameplay parts of the same area repeatedly, essentially. Yeah. That same like Air Force One that's downed. Let's see, five things we learned about the Division Two at Gamescom. This is from IGN. Uh, it wasn't the first. Tra- I don't care about that. City has been created one, but for one. That's fucking cool. Uh, separated into six distinct regions. Yeah, I don't think we learned a lot. DC is the main character. <laughs> So yeah, nothing, I don't think any big news came out about it. So, hopefully we get some more news about that in the near future. Uno momento, folks. We're having some Discord troubles. Let's change it to... Bloop. You can hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. I don't know what that was all about. Okay, so... Te- technology. Sometimes yep. it fucks up. As I was saying, uh, did you ever play Theme Hospital? Because I'm way too excited for Two Point Hospital. Yeah, I played Theme Hospital back in the day. Uh, yeah. Not not a, not a lot. I played more Theme Park than oh, I ever right. did play Theme Hospital. Two point hospital. I watched uh, Sips from the Yogs cast play this a lot. Like I've watched him play this a lot. many hours. <laughs> uh, just something I throw on in the background when I'm playing something, and it just guy it looks so fucking good. <laughs> I am so excited about this. Like I said, too excited about such a silly game that's just a hospital simulator. But the thing I love about it is there's a lot of really silly things about it, like um. God, I can't remember some of the, the, the diseases, but there's one that's basically they have a pan stuck on their head and the machine is like a magnet that pulls it off. Yeah, um, there's a lot of ridiculousness. There's one that the people come in, they look like a clown, and it's called Jest Congestion. And they go into like this circus tent, and I think it shows them a bunch of like depressing imagery, and they become a normal person again. <laughs> yeah. And that's what the, the treatments are, you know. It's not like, you know, take some medicine, you'll be fine. It's silly things, and I really love that. I can't remember. Yeah, it's like I can't remember what Surgeon the... Simulator if yeah. it were a <laughs> well, <laughs> if it were a sim game. This is something that I'm I'm super excited about. I don't know when this comes out. I think it's soon. I know there's like builds of it going around. Uh, August yeah, 30th that, comes out in five yeah, days. Been, there's been a lot of demo builds of this for the past few months. Hell yeah, I'm excited about this. It's only th- less than 30 bucks. I might be playing this very soon. <laughs> there goes your plans to get back to the division or Destiny yeah, 2. That's fine. It's all fine. This is fine. <laughs> Uh, and then this game, you said, and this is actually kind of what spawned us looking at Gamescom stuff, but you mentioned that we never did look at uh, Control, which, what episode 
What will where were we? That would have been like three or something. That would have been like one or two. Yeah. Okay. So this game is by the guys who made what? So it's made by Remedy. They made Max Payne. They made Quantum Break. They made Alan Wake. This is Project 7. So this is only the seventh game they've ever made. Okay. And like two or three of them are weird like mobile games. Hmm. The rest of those games are very high profile games. Yeah, like they they make great shit. I never, I I haven't played any of them. (laughs) You will like the first Max Payne, like, so like they've kind of followed a a similar trajectory to Rockstar as far as like learning from their previous games and taking a lot of like the better parts of it. Right. And transitioning it into the next one. So like if you ever play like Manhunt, you know, that stealth mechanic immediately transitioned into San Andreas. You know, like they, like they just pick, you know, these parts as they need them and move them forward. So, like, if you ever played the first Max Payne, it's this, you know, like this noir, like dark story about a cop trying to figure out, you know, who who actually killed his family. He, he's blamed for killing his wife and his daughter. And he's trying to get to the bottom of it. Right. Is this the original so, on PS2? That's the original, like, on PC, PS2, okay. yeah. My brother got uh, really into those games. I never did. Yeah, they're really good. And the weird thing is Sam Lake, like, the head writer and, like, director of all these games, that's his face in the very first Max Payne game. Oh. Like, he was, like, the body model for, like, Huh. For like the original designs. That's funny. But uh, yeah, so in that game, like, there's this drug in town called Valkyr. It causes all these crazy hallucinogens, and people are very violent when they take it. So there's like roaming gangs of like criminals that are hopped up in this drug, causing all sorts of mischief. And uh, there's all these weird hallucinogen, like, kind of focused things, and in the game there's this parody version of the Twilight Zone. So they kind of took like that idea of the Twilight Zone stuff and made Alan Wake. Hmm. So Alan Wake is this game about a writer. So imagine, you know, like Rod Serling is the guy who wrote like pretty much all the Twilight Zone stuff. Yeah. Or think of like a Stephen King. Imagine that guy waking up one day and kind of being trapped in his own like fiction. Yeah, it looks like an interesting game. I just never got around, and I don't do uh, horror games. Uh, is it well, like a really not, scary game, or it's really more like suspense thriller? Like okay. there are some like jump scares, and some of that shit's really creepy. Yeah, but I mean, your primary weapon is your flashlight. Because like they're these enemies are shrouded in darkness, so like you got to kind of like shine your flashlight at them to like burn the darkness off of them that's shielding them, and then you can you know kill them normally. Hmm. So it is this mechanic of like you can't actually hurt your enemy until you take the time to like expose them to light. Like all your like right. safe checkpoints are literally like big street lights, and you're in the glow of light. Like you walk into it, that's your checkpoint. Okay. Yeah, I never just never got the chance to play them. Pretty much, it wasn't on my, <clears throat> excuse me on my radar. But control. I mean, I know Remedy or not. What was the last game? The Quantum Break. Yeah, that game. I, I've heard very good things about that, and there was like a TV it, show or something went along with it. Well, there? so like they had essentially like every like chapter of the game then played into like a produced TV show. And so kind of based on your decisions, they had a couple different versions of those episodes. So it would like tell your story, you know, that you picked of these characters. Cause you know, all the characters are modeled on real actors. Okay. Uh, again, the fucking boss himself, Lance Reddick, good old Zavala. Oh. He's one of the main antagonists in this. 
So you actually get to see them instead of just listen to them in this yeah. game. But yeah, so like as you're going through, like you're coming back into town. Your brother is a scientist, and he invents the time machine essentially. And shit goes bad, and reality starting to break apart. Okay. And that's where the term quantum comes in for the time. Like you have these time powers to kind of like stop, rewind, do other things depending on the situation. Yeah. And there's you know this organization trying to take over and take control of like these time powers, and you're okay. just trying to you know save your brother and fix the timeline so shit doesn't fall apart. It looks neat. Yeah, like it's it's a cool story. I like, you know, it's probably like my least favorite of their games that I've played. Because, you know, Alan Wake and Max Payne are just so fucking like yeah. next level good. But Control just looks absolutely fucking crazy. And it's the kind of crazy I need. Right. Because it's weird occult shit and magic. It's like it's the Federal Bureau of Control. The character you play is this lady who's now the new like administrator, like the head of the head of the uh, administration for control. So there's all these like rituals you have to perform to like enter certain rooms. Like in the trailer, there's a guy literally just watching this fridge. Because if people don't, if if people look away from this thing, like it'll do crazy, terrible shit. So like, that's a job is like people are on shifts, sitting in a chair directly in front of this refrigerator. Oh shit! To stop it from acting up. Yeah. There's weird shit of like teleportation and levitation and some yeah. straight up Inception shit going on in this game. I got the gameplay trailer up now. Yeah. This looks cool. Yeah, man. They've always done weird, cool action. You know, very well. Because playing this, Quantum Break. Yeah, this is the, super psyops like. Yeah. We were talking about last week. I could use a game like this. Huh. Definitely have to look into that. Yeah, like these these enemies are like invaders from this other realm that are trying to break through and take over. You're trying to stop them. So all this crazy shit. This is a building. The oldest house is the name of this location. Yeah, I regret switching the I switched the video off for there because you go from an office building to whatever the fuck this is. Yeah, dude, it's <laughs> it's absolutely fucking nuts. Like it's holy crap. It's them going full remedy. And and I can't wait for it. Like this is like on my hype levels comparative to Resident Evil 2. This looks crazy. Is this only on PlayStation? No, it's okay. it's multiplat. I just saw the Cuz the other problem for Quantum Break was that it was a Xbox One exclusive. Yeah. So Are you like sure it's we didn't a good talk game. about this because I remember that crazy pistol. We may have talked about it a little bit. Okay. But they showed some more stuff, you know, at Gamescom. And uh man. Cause this is one of those games that has some of the uh the new NVIDIA GeForce like RTX stuff. Okay. So the new like 2080s that they're putting out. Like, this is going to be one of those games that actually has some of the enhanced features on the PC version. Okay. Wow. This looks bonkers. Yeah, I, I just want it so bad. Like, I'm down for absolute weird. And this is my brand of weird. <laughs> well, that's all the uh, the Gamescom stuff that we saw we were interested in. If there's anything we missed, let us know in the comment section. But uh, I think now we're going to do we'll do a little bit of a discussion about something that's been aggravating me when I see it. So there is an article. Let me make sure this is the right one. Yeah, there's been, at least been a few articles about the Switch 
basically saying that the Switch is nothing but, and actually this has come up at my job as well, the Switch is nothing but a port machine. And that's insane to me that people think that. Like, it's not as, it's as much of a port machine as the Xbox and the PlayStation are. There's just, everything's on everything now. And the Switch is having to catch up. Yeah, and also, for a lot of these companies, they have better sales than they did on any of the other platforms when they bring it to the Switch. Because so many of these indie games are short experiences, you know, that people may not want to sit down and dedicate, like, full time in front of their TV. But if they can, you know, just drop in and bullshit, you know, at lunch break while they're at work, or while they're, you know, on a plane or riding a bus. Yeah. They can, you know, actually do a lot more with some of these smaller experiences. Like Moonlighter, which is on the screen now. Sure, it's being ported over to the Switch. Why the fuck does that word even mean anymore? <laughs> like, yeah. Everything's on everything now, unless it's an exclusive. Exclusives are bullshit, as we've talked about. This war of mine, this game's been out for, out for forever. For yeah. Out forever, and it's being ported to the Switch. No, the game will just work really fucking well on the Switch, so let's put it on Switch. And like you said, well, there's also, so many developers that are doing very well on the Switch. Well, also this game, like, my friend Pedro, yeah, that's that looks coming so cool. to Switch and PC, and they haven't announced anything else. That'll happen more and more. Yeah, but also part of, like, this whole it's a port machine thing, which is funny to me that you saw finally today when I mentioned it to you, is, like, the day after you posted that article in our Discord and we were talking about it, I, like, that was the day they announced that they're porting, you know, Saints Row the Third to the Switch. Yeah. Which is, like... (laughs) like, Well, it's just a port machine. Super unnecessary. (laughs) Oh, uh, this right here, by the way, we're just showing the Nindies, new Nindies trailer. Yeah. Slay the Spire is going to be on Switch. That's exciting. Slay the Spire looks cool. Yeah, I want, I've want. i been wanting to get this game for a while. Wow, there's a quote from Northern Lion in this video. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, And Jack Sector guy. Cool. But anyways, like... Slay the Spire just looks so up my alley. I've been wanting to buy it on Steam. I just keep like, oh, maybe I'll wait for more yeah, stuff to come Yeah, because it's in out. early access, right? Yeah, it is. So I think I'm going to get it on Switch. I'm glad I've waited. So early 2019. Okay, I can wait. I will play the fuck out yeah, of it. The, comes out. the port machine thing probably comes from the fact that, you know, up until like, you know, the launch of the Switch and to be fair, outside of Bethesda, most of the current, you know, catalog, they're, they're not bringing, you know, day and date ports of a lot of these games that are coming out. You know, pe- people are looking at the idea of the Switch being like a end-all, be-all system. Like, you don't need an Xbox or a PS4 or a PC. And that's the wrong way to look at it. Because it's still, at the end of the day, a handheld. Yeah. There's Windjammers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Which does look fucking good. Yeah, it's it's Pong if it were a fighting game. Yeah, that's cool. Like, it's it's high skill. Like, like you know, people will tell you repeatedly, like, do not play this game alone. This game only is right. worthwhile if you're, you know, 1v1-ing. And this is, this must be Windjammers 2. Yeah, they announced, you know, in this random drop on the Nintendo UK channel that they didn't even fucking tweet yeah. about. <laughs> well, how depressing would it be if the next thing that comes out is just this on the US channel? <laughs> they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't fuck up that bad. But it'd be fun. Yeah, the, the new Nindy showcase that comes out on the 28th, they so, have at least talked about it in advance and said this is going to be unannounced games. Is this an entirely new Windjammers, or is it a port? No, this is literally... That game was made in 1994, yeah. Windjammers. And now, oh. because the port was successful, this company is making a sequel, finally. That's cool. Yeah. I just wish the ports would go away. That way we'd never get sequels. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, Terraria? Hell yeah. There's just so many games that should be on Switch, because why the fuck not? Yeah, I mean, especially, you know, a game like Terraria. Like, yeah. You know how much horse shit people want to do, like Prison I said, on their hour Fucking lunch break? Prison Architect. There's another game I've put so much time into. I God, I wish it wasn't coming out on the Switch. <laughs> It's like, no, don't follow me, my past. Yeah, no, this I don't is my know. dark past. I wanted to burn it and leave it behind. I don't know if I would like to play this on the Switch. Like, I don't, because this is such a mouse and keyboard kind of game to me. Well, you I just to, play it, you know, touch. Yeah, I, it's also on the Xbox. I have to check it out there. There's actually a story mode and shit in Prison Architect now. And they've also added an escape mode, like the escape. Yeah. Was... <laughs> yeah, this game is absolutely fantastic. But yeah, just the whole thing about the Switch being a port machine is is dumb as hell. Um, I don't know. I don't. I guess I play some ports on my Switch. Let's see. Well, I think so. Like I said, so much of the expectations are that you know that you're not going to get Call of Duty on this thing. You're not going to get Battlefield. No, I don't want them. So they're only going to get all these older games that are going to be re-released. But I still don't understand like what's considered a port. Is Stardew Valley considered a port? Yeah, think... because it wasn't originally built in mind with the Switch. The okay. Switch became popular after the game was released. And they saw you know a financial opportunity to put a good game on a system that will sell well. Shit. So yeah, like most of the games would probably be considered a port then. But again, who gives a shit? Yeah, Shovel Knight would be a port. Uh, Yoko's Island Express would be a port. So you if know. these games get released on the Xbox, whatever the hell that X one is, it's a port. Basically, if it wasn't, you know, if the original release didn't happen yeah. on this platform, they're just going to call it a port. But if all these games that are currently on the Xbox One system get ported over to the next Xbox. Is the next Xbox just a port machine? It's well, just, if they're not getting new, brand new games. Yeah. It's just a dumb thing. Dumb thing people say. So well, guess, yeah, because... There's that Morphe's Law game you're talking about. Yeah, what like, I, I'm super interested in it. But apparently it's just busted. Like, it doesn't Aww. work well. It's got It's really buggy. It's unfinished. Like people, like a lot of the reviews I saw were like, it kind of feels like an early access game that they just released. Well, I mean, if it does well on the Switch, then they can put more money and investment into it. I don't know. Yeah, because I, I, I just really wanted wanted to play it, but I don't want to spend twenty dollars on it. Yeah. Well, I think that's going to pretty much do it for us because we've run out of juice, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, this is almost three hours, I think. Yep, we're at three hours right now. <laughs> so, thank you for listening, guys. Uh, go like We're going to record on Saturdays or Sundays. It's pretty much always going to be Sundays. But go check out YouTube.com slash Best of the Realm. Twitch.tv slash Best of the Realm is where you're watching this. This podcast is available on iTunes and Google. Uh, go check out the Lark Brothers. We got a new video from the Neverwinter Coronation. And uh, you're at twitch.tv slash trollbeard underscore, right? Yeah, just anything I'm doing, it's that pesky underscore at the end. Yep. You can find me. And you can find all this stuff on futurevillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. Thank you for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. 